You are watching Co-op for Two, broadcasting live from Champaign, Illinois, Saturday night, 11 p.m., April 13th, 2024. Today we're going to be playing the Morrison Game Factory, which I'll talk about in a couple minutes. Let me just check in with the chat, see how everyone's doing. Um... Let's do a little bit of bookkeeping first. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday at 3 p.m., our normal play-by-mail time. Do I have all the lights on? Looks a little dark here. Uh, 3 p.m., our normal play-by-mail time. We are not going to be starting Dear Homes yet. We're waiting for the letters to pile up a little bit. So instead, I've scheduled a game of Mugbook, which is a rare out-of-print 1980s game reminiscent of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. We played a couple of sessions of that on the channel, and the Sunday group seemed to want to play that. So that's what we'll do tomorrow. I've been thinking, I almost scheduled one of our Sherlock Holmes crime dossiers, older games from the 80s as well. Um, I almost scheduled it for an 11 p.m. slot, but it looks like it could take us multiple sessions. And I was wondering if we might try playing that on Sunday afternoons when we don't have a Dear Holmes letter and just spread it out over several sessions. Let me know if you think that'll be a good idea. Then on Monday, um, we're going to play again the Seven Citadel. Jonathan Warner and I have been playing that in big, long seven-hour chunks. It's not the best thing for YouTube, but I am captivated by Seven Citadel, so I want to play more of that. So we're scheduled for a session of that on Monday, and then maybe even Wednesday as well. Tuesday is a hole in the schedule that I'm open to suggestions. I don't know if this game here is going to take us multiple sessions. The box says... The box says two to four hours. Now, normally when we play a game on the channel, I multiply the time by three. So that means six to 12 hours. So actually, if we can get it done in six, we'll do it all today. But if it takes us more than that, we're gonna have to split it up into two sessions. Maybe we'll do the second session on Tuesday if we need to go long, or we could do it tomorrow night as well. Other bit of bookkeeping, I just finished watching, well, actually, one of them is not finished, but two TV series. We are definitely in the era of really high-quality miniseries, and I've been pushing the miniseries Shogun for a while now. It still hasn't released its finale yet, but it is really remarkably good. You do need to focus your attention on it. but. There's another series that I watched on Netflix that is also remarkably high quality and beautifully shot and very well acted with some moments of humor and just uh, almost feels like um, that there's some special director out there who, who has been doing other stuff for some reason. And that is uh, the miniseries Ripley, which is based on the novel and a couple other books that came out on uh, Tom Ripley about a con man. But this new one, filmed in black and white, is really, really good. Both of those series, you have to have your attention focused on it because the acting and the scenes are just beautiful. All right, so let's talk about the Morrison Game Factory. This was Kickstarted. I purchased it on Kickstarter for, I think it cost $39 to back it, so it is reasonably affordable. It looks like it's coming to retail any day now for the same price, so you don't get any, you didn't benefit by getting it on Kickstarter. It is released by Rita Orlov's company, Post Curious. And I believe it's the first game from them that isn't created by Rita Orlov. Rita Orlov has made some very 
a highly acclaimed puzzle-based games. You can see some of them behind me there. Um, the Emerald Flame and uh, Threads of Fate and another little one based on tarot cards. Mists. Something mists. And they're all sort of subtitled puzzle tales, but this is the first one not made by her. And Rita Orlov's puzzles in the Emerald Flame and Threads of Fate and the Light in the Mist, the tarot one, are very beautiful puzzles, very elegant, beautiful puzzles. This one has a very different vibe. Uh, this one made by Lauren Bellow, I believe, who's a TV writer, producer. Let's look at the back of the box. Designed by Lauren Bella. Lauren Bell's a Nebula-nominated TV writer. So she's written a couple of series, TV series. And you can see what's going on here. This is kind of, let's get a wider view. This is a puzzle game made to look like a retro board game. And in the channel, someone was saying that they're getting box one, a feel that this might be a little bit like box one. And that's the same vibe I get, that this is sort of a... There's some narrative here in this puzzle. It's a puzzle game with some narrative, but I get the distinct impression that this is sort of a puzzle game narrative hidden inside of a more traditional board game format, which box one, I think may have pioneered. That's Neil Patrick Harris's game. We played that and reviewed it. Actually, I didn't review it. I don't think I just played it, but very impressive. And uh, looks to be a sort of deluxe experience. And that's a good segue to say that you can only play this once, then all the surprises are going to be ruined for you. So if you think you might want to play this yourself, you shouldn't watch this video. You should go wait for it to hit retail, which will be soon. Um, it's affordable. You can play it with your own group. This kind of deluxe experience games are well played in a group where everyone can be uh, sort of surprised by the unexpected nature of some of it. And then you can come watch the this live stream after you play it. But if you do decide you're not going to buy it yourself and play it yourself, maybe you don't have a good group to play with, you are welcome to join me. We'll play it together. I don't know if anything gets destroyed in this. I don't know if you can pass it along. I do know that you will need the internet to play it. I think I read somewhere that you may need to make a phone call, so I do have my phone handy. And as a reminder, I do purchase all of the games. We purchase all of the games we play on this channel ourselves here. Uh, I am gratefully accepting Patreon support on this channel to help pay for the games. There's no extra money. Uh, but all money that is donated to the channel will be spent on games, and I think it's fun. You might find that it's enjoyable to be a supporter of this channel and feel more invested in purchasing and um, being part of the process of acquiring games and playing them for this channel. Okay, and then I will try to do a review of this um, We'll talk about it. We'll review it after we play it, but I'll try to do a standalone spoiler-free review. Now, I should say that this one was quite aggressively sent out in as review copies to channels many months ago. So there are plenty of reviews of the game on YouTube and on Board Game Geek, and it's gotten some quite uh, high praise. All right, let's... Go to the chat and then we'll take a look at this and open it up. Jonathan Mayu says, I played Emerald Flame and Light in the Mist. Both are fantastic art narrative and puzzles are extremely inventive. I have high hopes for this one. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's get started then. All right. Maybe we can get a look and read the box. Morrison Game Factory, a puzzle tale. There's more happening on the factory floor than meets the eye. The Morrison Game Factory is a narrative puzzle adventure based in a board game factory full of mystery. On the outside, the factory is busily churning out games for the whole family to enjoy. 
On the inside, hidden messages and untold stories await. Solve riddles, crack codes, and unravel the secrets of the Morrison Game Company, all while falling in love with the characters of this sweet and funny puzzle tale. All right, we don't need to read the contents. It does say internet access required, though. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Zoom in a little bit. All right. Read me first. Hey, friends. Here's the scoop. I was exploring an old abandoned board game factory when I found this box on a conveyor belt, freshly printed, untouched, with the name of the factory on the front. Playing cards, dice, pieces of other games, there had to be some reason all these things ended up in the same box, but I wasn't sure what. So I did a little more snooping. Look in the folder labeled 3248 and check out what I found. I think there's a puzzle to solve here. Maybe even a whole trail of puzzles. Here's the thing, I'm not the greatest with puzzles. All I know is this doesn't seem like the sort of game that requires outside knowledge. But it does seem like a game that might require more than what's in the box. For instance, a computer with internet access. Just a tip. I'm going to keep brainstorming, but in the meantime, I figured I'd better get the stuff into the hands of an expert. See what you can solve. If you get stuck, check out my blog at urbanexplorer.blog. Maybe I'll have made some more progress. Good luck. Okay, so we've got our first website. Maybe we should be keeping track of this. Let me remind you that the way we play games as a channel on this group is you shouldn't be looking at anything like going to the internet without me. If you have this game, if you have a copy of this game on your own, you should be waiting and looking at things as I look at them on the channel. If you want to keep playing along and offer suggestions, if you want to go in your own timeline, that's fine. Just don't offer any tips and help. Okay, let's see. Look at folder. I'm going to brainstorm and see if you get stuck, check out blog art. So that's if we get stuck for hints. So we're not going to do that if we can help it. Um, and we know we might need internet access. Okay. Older 3248, what's that all about? And look at this shining through this. Feels like there's a little bit of a fold here. I don't know what that's about. Can you see it? It's kind of like, mm, you can't really see it. There's a little bit of a fold here for some reason. I don't know what. And there's some ink bleeding through. Looks like it's just blood through ink. Okay. Well, what's the deal with this folder? What's we've got a lot of weird items here. We've got a locked purse reminiscent of the Hunter Killer standalone games. Bunch of parts. Uh calibration box. Looks like it's probably cards. A folded up game board. A looks like advertisements for other games made by this company. Pretty cool. Target the pirate game, print and play game. Someone has looks like filled out some of it. An activity page. Needs a word list. Oh, this might be the folder it was talking about. Okay, so here's our folder, 3248. So let's put the rest of this back for now and start with where it wanted us to start. Okay, let's look at our folder, 3248. Morrison Game Company, maintenance log, maintenance log, maintenance log, and a little attached sheet. Okay. What have we got here? What is this maintenance log? 421, machine 5912. Ink output was smeared, wiped down rollers, and restarted transfer process. Cleaned, initials TY. Okay, so we've got a worker here, initials TY. 
who's keeping track of maintenance, okay? Broken belt from ordinary wear and tear. Clipboard dust slowing down gears. Machine printed out hello, hello, hello at the top of each instructional manual. Ran full diagnostics. Couldn't find programming issue. Solved with the reset. Aha, uh -huh. do we have a sentient machine? Machine die cut alignment shifted three centimeters to the right, resulting in token misprint. I realigned it. Okay. So we have certain machines. This one looks like it's becoming sentient. Hello, hello, hello. 3248. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's look at this machine again. 3248. Machine printed. I'm awake. Hello. Ran diagnostic, found no issue, solved with reset. <laughs> okay. Routine machinery fluid filter check. Here's machine 3248 again. Maybe we should zoom in on these machines 3248. What does this one say? During off hours, machine turned on using generator power. Printed a series of hearts, used up a bale of paper, solved with reset. Okay, here's another 3248. Machine printed, please don't reset me. On Uncle Petunia, bifold game board, solved with reset. In addition, disconnected from power for 10 minutes before reconnecting. Update. In the future, assistant plant manager requested a solution other than unplugging as it disrupts the machine learning process. Seems unnecessary, but not my call. We'll revisit if there are future issues, but fingers crossed we can get some damn peace and quiet. Okay, then you got normal maintenance for the other machines that aren't 3248. It's 3248. That's the Sentient machine. Okay, let's look. Let's continue down here. There's no years here, but I, I see. Okay, so they are numbered by page eight, nine. Okay, so here's the next one. Routine maintenance, cracked ejection pin. Here's thirty-two forty-eight again. Not this again. Machine replaced the detective's name in the detective game with three two forty-eight. Solved with reset. Oh, how lovely is this? Machine switched art panels on the cover of Justice the Board Game so that girls were playing the game and boys were doing the dishes. All other print alignment was normal, solved with reset. Machine began choreographing basic movements. Not sure how to describe this. Sound of the movements made a song. Roller rotation, tray movement, etc. Goddamn obnoxious, solved with reset. Machine printed ASCII art of yours truly carrying a torch and pitchfork <laughs> appeared to be based on Frankenstein's maze box design with angry townspeople. Manager would not allow me to reset and refused to destroy the printout. Brought supervisor in to take a look at machine 3248 given its proclivity for malfunction. Recommended course of action was to remove and replace. Assistant plant manager refused to sign off. Called the machine a mascot. 3248. Previous APM assistant plant manager promoted to new office. New assistant plant manager signed off on a hard wipe and restore. Suspect this will permanently fix the issue. Mm -hmm. And then Al, the, the assistant plant manager, has signed off on it. Okay, let's look what we've got here. Routine machinery fluid levels, cracked vacuum tube, routine machinery fluid, machine broke down after 20 years of reliable service, no perceivable solution, stripped for parts, requisition replacement, routine machinery fluid, facility walkthrough with Jimmy to show him the ropes, retiring next week. First routine inspection, all looking good. Suggested moving machines two inches further apart for optimal safety when passing through. Don't think suggestion will be implemented. Team mach machinery fluid level, 9233. Minor misalignment issue. Said not worth cost of repair as factory is shutting down soon. I see. 
routine machinery fluid level and filter check. Routine machinery fluid level and filter check. Last day, last day of operation, quality control inspector caught a single copy of Wheels in Wheels manual with a garbled text misprint on page seven, right after the line, one more step. You're there. One more step and you're there. Reprinted correct copy without issue. Ensured all machines were correctly shut down end of the day. RIP Morrison Game Company. It's the end of an era. All right. And notice that after here, he's taught a new person the ropes and now we've got a new person running the place. Now what's this? Oh, this is the... Single copy of Wheels in Wheels manual with garbled text. Okay, let's look at the garbled text here. I see it looks like a code. One more step and you're there. And then some misprinted code with unusual letter frequencies. O, K's, D's almost entirely. So if it's English frequency, you might expect the B's, K's, O's, E, A, whatever. Okay. So we've got a little story of a sentient machine that was taken offline. Now, I do see a phone number here. And I did mention that I thought I read somewhere that there may be a phone number to call. So I may call this phone number, but maybe we won't do it right away. So we've got a sentient machine, a maintenance person who caused it to be wiped out, but maybe it's still alive and working. And then the factory shut down. Okay, so let's... let's these here, we'll reread them if we think they're important later. We'll keep this out. Okay, so that's where it told us to start. And that's our setup. Uh, I love the idea of a sentient machine being at the heart of this mystery. Um, okay, let's, in our little to-do list, let us write down so we don't forget call the maintenance log number very important to keep track of things we want to not forget to do all right and i guess um so maybe the first thing actually whoops before we do this is a couple of things were mentioned right uh, I just want to see the other 3248 comment about where what it misprinted. Replace detective name with 3248. Okay, that doesn't need to get looked up. Replaced photos, girl, boys doing dishes. That doesn't need to be looked up. Musical sounds. ASCII art of years truly. Manager wouldn't write wouldn't reset it and then they would okay so there's nothing we need to look up i don't think okay we don't know the code to open this so we can't do that parts maybe we'll just get out these parts and organize them and off to the side All right. So the sentient machine may have been introducing things that the quality control person didn't notice. Not very many parts here, actually. Um, but this is a three digit code. Okay, so we don't know what how to open that. We've got this. Let's maybe we'll open up these cards and take a look at what we've got here. This calibration.
Okay. Is this a game called Calibration? Maybe actually before I open it, let's look up the catalog and see if there's information on some of these games and maybe we'll open up our board here. All right, so here's our board. Nothing feels weird about it. These aren't thermo bots. We've got color one, two, three, four, five. Color one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So each one starts with the color, ends with the color hexagon. Actually, no, not yes. Uh, it is a hexagon, and these are our. They're not these colors per se but are they these colors yellow there's no blue just green okay so but actually they do match these colors okay so these match these colors all right well we'll worry about that in a bit Let's take a look at this catalog. Happiness starts with Morrison. Excitement, cheer, thrills, laughter. Our games have been a success in homes around the globe, and here's why. Each of our products is designed, tested, and improved by good folks just like you. That's right, you. Here are just some of the fun makers whose special touch helped make Morrison what it is today. Okay, game design Warren Bellow. So that's the real designer of this game. Writing Warren Bellow. Cover illustrations Steve Thomas. Graphic design Warren Bellow, Rita Orloff, and Rude Cool. Okay, so these are real people. All right, but now let's look at this. Morrison is a one, is one of a kind. From Buncombe to Brickle Brackle, from Uncle Petunia to The Queen's Tale, our games have been the talk of the town. That's because we develop all of our products in-house using our patented methods to create games that are, in a word, exceptional. This year's products are no different. We're expanding our Brickle Brackle line by over 50%, providing even more new ways to play. We're adding newer, larger figurine collections. Last but not least, we're bringing, out, bringing back the universally beloved The Comical Game of Huzzah, now available in a brand new color edition. And Morrison, there's something for everyone. That's our guarantee. Spectacular board games from our family to yours. K. Morrison. Okay. Our featured game of the year is called The Queen's Tale. When the queen loses her tail, it's up to two to four players to search the kingdom for a proper fluffy replacement. Explore the forest, open chests, search cabins, and bargain with woodland creatures to learn about the queen's taste in tales. Whoever wins the queen's favor with the most acceptable tail wins. Reshuffle the deck of capricious cards to give the queen a different set of tastes and preferences every game. The whole family will want to please the queen. Okay. So, any writing in the fur? It kind of looks like it could be hiding some writing. I don't see any, though, at first glance. Okay, please Wumpus. Who has better boundaries? Time to find out. Suit yourself. Match your outfit to the right accessories and avoid embarrassment at social gatherings. Now with belt. And there's little numbers for each game. That could be relevant. A F B G K F B G. Camp away. Camping time. Can you find your way to the main trail? Comical game of Huzzah. Classic game returns to print. Word zoo. Gerunds and adjectives and interjections. Oh my. Now this matches this. So this says, why is it so hard to insult an elephant? Elephants have thick skin. 
Elephant skin is 2.0 centimeters thick in most places. The folds and wrinkles in their skin can retain up to 10 times more water than flat skin does, which helps them to cool down. Okay. And then this says needs a word list. So is this our word list? Word zoo. Hmm. Okay, well, let's keep going. Inside out, order them from large to small. Umbilico, connect the objects of the same type. Bunkum, the game of utter nonsense. Numbric, can you spot the numbers? Hmm. Huh. I'm so weird. Huh? Grow. In the game of gardening, there is only one winner. Planetoid, your favorite interstellar adventures are back. Calibration. Okay, that's the card set we got. So let's see. A game of compound words and phrases in a row. Okay. The cleverest cloud. The latest in technology, an electronic cloud head. Game of faces. Every expression a new surprise, now with mustaches. Uncle Petunia, Uncle Petunia has some tricks up his sleeve. Okay. Target the pirate. So we've got something from that here. And the conclusion of each round, note the configuration of targets hit and score according to the table below. Highest score wins. Figure A, B, C, D, E, F, G to Z. Okay, so this looks like it might be a way to transfer something to letters, a code. Thank you for playing. Did you know pirates are still around today? Some of the world's most famous modern pirates include Mergatha the Tall, Cameo Gray Fox, Danny Green Dragon, Tristan Stonewolf, and Ambidextrous Steve. If you run into one, watch out. Wishlist. Doll kite, top yo yo ball, gum bat pony bike, dart. So I don't know why there's writing on this. We do have a way to turn letters into shapes on what looks like a, on a two by three grid. Does that relate to this? If we write out G U M. Do we get a shape or is this for a different puzzle like the word list? Here, possibly. And why are these different colors? Let's look at these colors for a second. It looks like blue, orange, pink, gray. That looks like these colors. Blue, gray, pink, and orange. So I think these are for that. For what reason, we don't know yet, though. All right. And then we saw the game that this was for. Calibration, a game of compound words and phrases in a row. Okay, a little bit strange. In a row, huh? Okay. Let's keep going through here. Game of Faces, we did that. Wheels in Wheels, that's the one with the misprint. Now we got a hint. Can you get Caesar's chariot wheels turning? It doesn't take much. Okay, so that strongly suggests this is a Caesar cipher. Caesar's chariot. Okay, so that feels like this is telling us this is a Caesar cipher, which we can come back to. Midnight, move clockwise and counterclockwise, don't turn into a pumpkin. Okay, and here they are selling figure collections. 
Sally's ready to pose, whether it's holding a camera, eating with a spoon, or even playing the piano. Our only model with fully articulated fingers. Then you've got Alana. A fairy with gossamer white butterfly wings, five different colors. Our new aliens in Comet Land collection is made from the same flexi rubber you've come to know and love, now in a new blue hue. Strong, elastic, and ready for action. Rosie is an alien miner who works on a nearby meteor. Marty, your favorite movie star, is back and more fabulous than ever, complete with a functional voice box. Hey, look at this. Susanna, friend humans to humans and animals alike. Dr. Sue is the best doctor in the business. Her new accessory kit comes with bandages that can be used on any figurine set. Dan is always a lover of adventure. Dan is compatible with both our volleyball set and our rock climbing set. Comes with a closet of athletic jerseys. You never know what sport he'll take on next. Steve, everyone's favorite telegraph operator, now comes with a new toy. A real working miniature telegraph set. Perfect for tiny fingers to operate. This one will sell out quickly, so be sure to place your order. And then... ASAP. So it looks like probably Morse code, or I assume that's Morse code, but it doesn't matter. Here's the decoding for telegraph. Let's just call that Morse code with dot and dash. I can't remember if that's the actual Morse code dot dash for an A. And then special furniture, Morrison Classic Game Table, our classic. Gaming table now comes with upgraded legs. Table's three legs provide both stability and flexibility. Bend them to accommodate an uneven floor. Keep them straight for a classic look. Lockable wheels are easy to maneuver, making this the most portable table you've ever owned. Comes with an outlet for plugging in electronic games, our most adaptable table yet. Or the Morrison Original Game Table, FN201. If table mobility isn't a concern, consider our heavier model. This table may be prone to wobble, but at two, <laughs> two, two million dollars, that's your floor's fault. Resistant to stains and scratches, this table will last a lifetime. And that's odd that the price is so strangely high. Okay. Well. What an odd situation we find ourselves in. We've gone through them. It's not immediately clear where to start. Um, what we should do here is we should, um, well, let, let's, before we take a break, we're going to take an early break for a second, but I do want to look at this and recognize that we found the thing that these dice seem to fit with. We found a puzzle that fits these. However, what we haven't found is the game that these like. Now, is there a game I looked overlooked that's about spaceships, planetoid? Possibly. If you had to guess, it would be planetoid. And then we found this one. We found the game this goes with. 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 So only the rockets have we not found the game, but probably, if you had to guess, it would be planetoid. And we may be able to attack this right now. It's possible that these go with this. Looks like four of each color for what it's worth. All right, what I think we should do here is take an early break. You've seen enough of this game. We haven't solved anything that if you think this is for you, you may want to stop watching now, buy it, when it comes out to retail and watch this video afterwards. If you are gonna stick with me, I'd love to have you stay. We'll take an eight minute break. We'll come back and we'll figure out which joint of this chicken to carve first.
Okay, we're back. YouTube says 17 concurrent viewers, five likes. Um, let's talk about what we could do. So one thing we could do is we could call this phone number here. Another thing we could do is try to figure out the Caesar cipher used here. If we're correct, this is the Caesar cipher. We've got some double letters. K would make sense that it was an L, a double letter ending in L. If everything shifts once, I can see already this would say C A L L. So double letter at the end of the word there aren't too many double letters that's why we can probably guess that's an l if we shift everything by one b becomes c z becomes a so this is call e h o n e g goes to e e h o n -E. E E H O N E. Oh, uh, that's an O, not a D. So that's phone. B H O N E. Okay. So this is going to say call phone, these last two letters, two words. Okay. So that must be an O P L E A S E. Please, H E L P. Please help call phone. Okay, so that message is Caesar Cipher shifted. Please help call phone. Everyone see how we got that? We know this is a Caesar Cipher because the game entry says mentions the word Caesar. We could check all the Caesar ciphers, but a quick look at it looks like the K is probably a word ending in L, and it would make sense too because you've got the common letter is one of the common letters is D. It makes sense that that would map to an E. Okay, please help call phone. All right, so that this is actually the same thing as this. It's just a little hint about that. So, okay, so we still got one thing we could do is we can call the phone. It sounds like that might be the first thing to start by doing. Um, as a reminder, with since we do have the sentient machine 3248, it wouldn't be surprising if it was sneaking its numbers in 3248 somewhere. We might want to keep that in mind. Okay, another puzzle we could try to tackle is this list here. This is written by a person, it looks like. I see a couple of options here. We know these colors map to these. So a couple of things we could do. We could see if all the blue spell a word. D-I-E O Y, and that's not the E is gray. D I O Y B M A Y E R. D I O Y B M A Y E R. That's not a word. And if you go across, you don't get a word. Okay, so that's one option. Maybe we'll double check it by looking at the oranges. L, T, Y, A, nothing, T, P, I, T. It doesn't look right. Although we, if we went backwards, T, I, P, T, A, Y, T, L, no. Okay, that was one option. Um, Another option option would be to use these letters to look up patterns here we've seen this kind of thing before although i'm not quite sure how that would work but just as a test d-o-l-l -L, 
Well, a double L doesn't seem to make much sense, but if you overlaid, this is the kind of thing we see in puzzles. If you overlay D on top of O, and then an L on top of it, doesn't feel like you'd get much. Doesn't seem likely. And then another option would be that these are the words here. Let's just see if we can't rule that out. Let's see. Do you see any of these words like doll, D O? D O. Okay, I don't see those words in here. Would make more sense that we're supposed to line up the colors. Maybe we'll just write that out for the hell of it. So if we have blue, gray, orange, Pink. Then we have D, I. It is interesting that some of these letters are capitalized and some are lowercase. That feels like a little bit of a clue. D, I, O, Y, B, M, A. Lowercase y, e, r. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's just do the rest of these. O, e, t, o, l, u, v. N K D. They're all four letter words except this one. That's kind of odd. Okay, now for pink, uh let's see orange is next. L T nothing. Y A nothing. There's another a couple more three letter words. Seven looks like a capital T orange P I T and then for pink we have L K E O L G no pink here O B Nothing jumps out at me. Are these objects that can be found in the... in the game... I do notice something. B U N K 
So let me just look at the catalog again. What was the Bunko one? Are they anagrams? I wonder. Bunkum. B U N K U. No M. Well, this kind of looks suspicious. Like. U-N-K-E-K-U. -E all right, well, let's put it aside for now. I don't know that all these objects can be found in here. But we tried a couple of things. We'll put this aside for now. Obviously, the colors are going to be significant, and it is odd that it matches these. I still think this feels like it might go in here. D I Y O. But I don't know how. Okay, let's put this aside for now. We'll worry about this in a bit. And we don't quite know what to do with this. Okay. Um, given that, calibration, a com game of compound words and phrases in a row, that almost sounds like, I'm hesitant to call the phone number yet because it could give us a hint. Let's we'll see if we can't figure out as much on our own first. But if you imagine we're supposed to come up with compound words, this looks like a straight. There's a bullseye from that pirate one, it looks like almost. This looks like match. Funnel, phone. Pen, door. I'm trying to think if any phrases jump out. I mean, if you tried to identify the cards that would have clear words associated with them, I don't see it. And nothing jumps out at me, so I think this is going to have to wait for us. All right, I think it's time to call the phone number then. All right, so we're going to call this phone number together and listen to it. And you don't need to see everything on the phone. But let's try. So we want one seven two zero. Where's speakerphone? One seven two zero. I don't really use my phone much. I have to admit six six three eight three one seven. Let's try this together. Thank you for calling Morrison Game Company. Spectacular board games from our family to yours. Here at Morrison, we employ the most advanced technology known to man. Our machines work tirelessly to manufacture the games you know and love. We've even connected our patented technology to our phone line. That's right. With one telephone call, our engineers can interact directly with our machines. What do you say, machine 3248? <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, that's wonderful, through two for me. Can we hear that once more? hope you enjoyed your conversation with Machine 3248. Until your next call, this is Morrison Game Company. Spectacular board game from our family to you. Okay. It certainly seems like he was talking in telegraph code, which is explained here with dots and dashes. Uh, however, it was a little hard to parse. I wish I had written these on two sheets. So, let's see if we can make some progress here. I heard like dash, dash, and then dash, dash, dash. So let's see, what would be the first couple letters of that? Dash, dash is an M. If I'm right that the longs are dashes, so then that would be M. Okay, dash, dash, dash is an O. So is he saying Morrison? Is this R dot dot dash? Is that an R? It could dot dash dot. Okay, so I could have translated this wrong. First time I did it was dot dot dot. But I have a feeling that's going to be an R. R R. M O R R. And this would be an I, a double dot. Yes. S O N dash dot is R N. Okay, so so far this is right. So it lets us know that we're doing this right. Okay, what about now? Remember, some of these may not have translated properly. Will you let me know if you disagree with me on any specific ones? So here I have a dot dot dot. That would be an I mean, it's right. And S, put this aside. S, E, dot, dash, dot, if that's correct, is a P. Dot, 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 is an H, E. Dot dash dot R. Let's say dot dash dot dash. Dash dot dot L. Dash dot dot dash. Oh, no, I started getting fuzzy around here. Dash dot dot dash is an X. X. Dash 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 is an O. Dash dash is our M. That does not seem right. We may have to call back. 
Does anyone get that better than I did? Morrison? What did I get it the first time? Seems like dash dash, this is definitely an M. This could have been just three dashes. Oh. Dash dot dot dash. What's an X? And then I heard a whole bunch of dot here, but that's clearly not right. I guess I'm gonna have to call back if no one in the channel has any better idea. It doesn't look like anyone in the channel has got any insight. Thank you for calling Morrison Game Company. Spectacular board game. From our family to yours. Here at Mars, we employ the most advanced technology known to man. Our machines for tiles. Manufacture the games you know and love. We've even connected our patented technology to our phone line. That's right. With one telephone call, our engineers can interact directly with our I machines. think uh, NA what has a very good guess. It's, it's a website. Wonderful, Can we hear that once more? How about you pause? I'm gonna hang up. We'll get it again. Okay, I think your NA's guess that this is probably C O M ending in a website makes a lot sense. A lot of sense. Let's try again though. M O R I M O R R I S O N. And now dot 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 is an S. A dot is an E. So that's so far consistent. Then dot dash dot. That's the same thing I got last time as a P. And then here, this one is a tricky one. I decoded it first as an H. Now I've got dot, 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 dash. That one I'm not really sure about. This is a confusing combination. But if it was dot, 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 dash, it would be a V. Then this one's definitely an E. This again, I picked up as an R. Then this was a very confusing one. Dot dash da ah, but then this becomes a slash. But then is this not dash dot dash? Yeah, this is C O M. So Morrison. Uh, 
a dot is actually dot dash dot dash So is it possible that that this is actually our dot, dot, dash, dot. Okay, so this isn't a slash, this is our period. So it is dot com, but is it morrisonsepfer.com? Or is it Morrison something else that I'm translating wrong? This one is very iffy. In one translation, I got an H here. In one translation, I got a V. Is there anything that makes more sense? Morrison. Sep. It's like dot, dot, dot. And then either a dash or a dot. Did anyone hear this letter differently? Server. So you're saying this is right, but this you think is an R. Morrisonserver.com. Boy, that seems right to me. So for some reason, how did the R turn into a P? The R is dot dash dot dot dash dot. Oh, that's what I wrote. I just decoded it wrong. Dot dash dash. Okay, so that's definitely morrisonserver.com. Okay, we got it with some help from the channel. Good work. All right, so now we've got a website. All right, well done, team. All right, well, I guess we're going to go to that website now. All right, that was uh, a little bit tricky to get that translation right, but with enough context, I'm guessing. And some help from the channel, guessing that it's .com. That was actually a very insightful guess that it was going to be a website. All right, let us now go and go to this address. This is kind of exciting. So, morrisonserver.com. Whoa, here we go. Oh, calibration required. <laughs> Look at this. Look how cool this is. Okay, so this is absolutely you gonna use our um our cards, our calibration cards. Okay, let's put this aside and let's go to our calibration cards. All right. Attempting to connect the 3248 calibration required. Please calibrate the following pairs. Magic to cloud. Okay. Let's see. That's not going to be magic, is it? Magic cloud. Well, cloud is the name of a game. Camp mate practice open knife bomb box line club stop vision. Calibration must be in order left to right. But then there is a little help button. Uh, combat and camp, huh? Well, I thought it was going to need these, but I now I'm not so sure. Big knife. I mean, those aren't things on these cards. They do feel like they're things in our booklet, though. Like Cloud, we noticed there was a game called Cloud. Magic Cloud. Okay, where was our cloud? The cleverest cloud. What's magic to cloud? Combat is camp. Let's just look here. We have a camp. Blank mate. Blank mate, huh?
moving practice. The practice certainly seems like name of compound words and phrases in a row. Magic cloud combat camp. Moving practice. Monkey open pig knife nose bomb chest box. Let's see what happens if we click on this help. Feels like we shouldn't need this. You're a Marson Game Company engineer and can't remember your calibration code. You can find assistance here. That said, you should have all the tools you require to deduce the code. Only click if you are certain that you need further assistance. Okay, well, we don't want to ask for further assistance then. Okay, calibrate the following pairs. Magic Cloud. Is the, are we supposed to find the thing that goes in between, like magic something cloud, magic? Magic dive, magic door, magic stick cloud, magic wrench cloud, magic loot cloud, magic trophy cloud, magic cowgirl cloud. Magic Doctor Cloud, Magic Mushroom Cloud. There you go. Okay, Magic Mushroom and Mushroom Cloud. Okay, so now we understand. So combat. Boots and boot camp. Okay. Blank. Check. And checkmate. Yeah. Okay. Moving target and target practice is our next one. Okay. Monkey wrench and wrench open. You wrench open something. Pig. Big pen and a pen knife. Okay. Maybe we can zoom out a bit. Okay. All right, what's next? Nose dive and dive bomb. Chess. Something box, swing box, doctor box, cowgirl trophy box, match, match box, chess match, chess match, and max match box, queen something and something line, queen door, queen trophy, queen smile, queen doctor, queen swing, swing line. Queen swing, that's what I'm saying, right? Queen B and B line. Okay. Mini and something club. Mini trophy, trophy club. Mini swing, swing club. I'm going to skip that one. Next. Door and door stop. Wind tunnel and tunnel vision. Okay, so what's mini? Hand club, straight club. Mini straight, no. Mini telephone, mini phone, phone club, no. Mini trophy, mini award, award club, no. What have we got here? Wink, cowgirl, no. A doctor, mini doctor, doctor club, no. This looks like mini golf and golf club. Okay. So there's our calibration. We got it. Yes, it was mini golf. You're right. 
Okay. All right. That was kind of fun. I like the idea of it. Enter the calibration code. Here we go. Input code to calibrate. I mean, does it want the whole thing? Let's just say, okay. Okay. Calibration must be in order left to right. It doesn't want the whole thing. X, X, X. I wonder if it wants a four digit code somehow. It's a lot to type in to be. That's kind of annoying. Does it really want me to type this whole thing in? Only to be told no, mushroom, boot, check, target, wrench, and dive. Was it stick, match, or was match? And B, and then golf. And then door funnel. Ah, oh, that's annoying. It's annoying because we know the answer here, but it's not clear. But we have to type in a lot, which could be prone to typos. But, okay, let me not get irritated. Let me just notice that. It seems to want a four digit number. Four letter number. All right, let's think about this for a second. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. Twelve things. What would be a calibration code that would be four letters or digits? How could that be? Calibrate the following pairs. Calibration must be in order left to right. Anything hidden on the card back, says the channel. No, I don't see any numbers. Um, it's a little confusing because... Why is it confusing? It's confusing because we seem to have solved this puzzle, and yet there's another aspect to it in terms of what it wants, how it wants us to provide this information. And it's being very obtuse about what it wants. Like, is this saying it should be four letters? Like, I type more letters, the X's are still there. This is a very poor user interface. But what does it mean? Does it mean it wants to start out by us putting in the name of the robot? I don't. I, is it want the four that are remaining? Is, are there only four remaining? One, two, three, four, five, six. No. Okay. Well, all right. I'm unhappy, but I got to relax. Too early to be getting frustrated. Um, one, two, four, eight. Like, is this the preliminary information before we can put it in? No. 
You just want to be annoying. Okay. Fine. All right, just relax. We don't know that it wants a four-letter answer or a four-number answer, although it looks like that's what it wants. Uh, what if those are the num those get translated here? Do we see any words for mushroom here? Why would we need more? Why would we need more? Calibration JX567, a game of compound words and phrases in a row. Yes, okay. We've solved your puzzle. Now, what do you want from us? Does look like. There are some different color. Is it my imagination or are some of these different colors? No, I guess they're not. It's pink at the top, orange at the bottom, red on the side. It's a little bit confusing though. If they were all threes, that would give us four numbers. Do these spell? Is this T? O F I? I think these are spelling. This is an E. I think these are spelling things. I think this is an O F I. V. That's an E. This is hiding letters. But then would this be an N? And this would be a T, T E N. But what would this be? V L T E N. T W O F I V two five T W O F I V E two five ten. I think that's what it's telling us. All right. A weird way to say it, but okay, so. Two, five, ten. Hey, we did it. All right, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's see if we're going to get any audio from this. Oh, we're talking to the machine. That's exciting. Oh, I guess we have to click this. Is there going to be any audio? Let me uh, get prepared in case there is. All right. All right, let's interface with the machine. Is it going to be talking in Morse code again? I hope not.
Okay, definitely getting box one vibes, but that was pretty fun. Um, I do have a slight complaint with that four digit XXX. It just feels like they could have said we want four digits. And if they had said that, that would have been completely fine. I would have been very, I would have been fine if they just said we want four digits. All right, so here what we have. So we've got the sentient machine that wants us to rescue it from its factory being closed down. Pretty wonderful little setup and story here. And it's running out of power. It needs our help. Okay, let's see what we've got. So we can, this is the control panel. We can click on memory, camera view, assembly line controls, which are locked. And then this code that we don't know what it is. So these are our four links plus help. All right, let's click. We'll go down these in order. Let's see what we got. Memory. Memory cache empty. Zero memories restored. Okay, so maybe as we proceed, this is going to be our... Let's a little bookmark this. Okay, so we're going to be checking its memory as we bring back its memories. Pretty cool. Okay. But we can't do anything there until we until we restore its memories. Okay. What about camera view? Note, my optic center is damaged. I can't quite make out what I'm seeing. All the information below will be accurate, but fragmented. Okay. There are game tokens from the game Planetoid. That's what we guessed. These might be all right if we zoom in do we get a better view okay there are game tokens from the game planetoid scattered around some floor tiles there are three rows and 12 columns of tiles okay so that's these no more than one token occupies each tile no two tokens of the same color are adjacent, including a, a diagonal. So you could never have this or this, okay? No section contains two tokens of the same color. No section, three rows and 12 columns. So no section contains two columns tokens what is a section is it a row and a column that's if i had to guess i would say it's telling you can't do this or this there is one white token in the top row one white token in the middle row and one white token in the bottom row there are no yellow tokens in the top row. Well, then we're then we're definitely wrong about. Well, are they all there? If they're all there, then we can't be right about what sections mean because you'd have to put this on a row with something else. There are no red tokens in the bottom row. Okay. Maybe there's only three of each. Even though we're given four, we don't know. Okay, well, before we try to solve that explicitly, let's figure out what else it wants from us. Oh, here are the sections, I see. So, that's the rules, but in order to solve that, we need to understand what the sections are. So that's our overview. Okay, let me just write this out so we don't have to go do this again. Uh, no section contains same color and then white is one in each row 
and then yellow is none in top and red none in the bottom okay and then it's going to tell us how to identify the sections this section can covers the first leftmost three by three grid okay so oops so there's our first section There are three tokens visible. There are no tokens in the left column. There are no tokens in the middle row. The red token is separated from the green token by one empty space. Okay. Let's just keep looking through these for a second. Section two. The second three by three. Okay, so it's all three by threes. So section one, two, three, four, four sections. Okay. All right, so constraints about each section. Let's just walk through this. The next third three by three. Okay, so that's nice and clean. Okay, more constraints. Okay, so now, assuming we laid this all out, where would we give it the answer to this? Like there's camera view system. Can't make out what I'm seeing. Maybe when we fill this in, we'll get a number or a word spelled. Okay, let's let's try to do this again properly now. Okay, well, where's let's first of all let's look up planetoid to see if there's any more hint here. Your favorite interstellar interstellar adventures are back. Okay, doesn't help us there. All right, no more than one token on each tile, no tokens of the same color, adjacent, no section contains two tokens of the same color. Okay, I see. No se whole section contains more than one. All right, let's go back now. All right, let's see if we can't do these one at a time, may not be able to. Three tokens visible. All right, so we need three tokens in this section. Let's block it off so we focus on this. There are no tokens in the left column, no tokens in the middle row. Okay, so it's just these four. One, two, three, four. Okay. No tokens there, no tokens there. All right, let's just weigh this out. Three tokens visible. Okay. So there's one white, yellow is none in the top, red, none in the bottom. So that's, there's lots of possibilities here. Okay. Uh, there are no tokens in the left column. There are no tokens in the middle row. The red token, so there is a red token. We know the red can't be at the bottom and the white's at the top. So that would make more sense. There are no tokens, whoops. No tokens in the middle row. Left column, right, okay. But there's only three, okay. So we've got four spots. No reason this can't be here though. No section contains the same color, but was there a rule about, sorry, I need to go back to the general rule. Could it be that none can be in the same column? Or does it have to be the same color? No two tokens of the same color. No section contains two tokens of the same color. Okay. All right. So we've got a couple of possible. It's it's the thing that makes this difficult is that the instructions are in different pages. Okay, three visible, no tokens in the left, no tokens in the middle. So red, none in the bottom. So that can't be like that, but it could be like that. Um, but then if this white is here, 
then that's the only one in the top row. That's consistent though. All right, this might be a little annoying because of having to go back here. It might be easier to print these out or write them down, which I really don't want to have to do, but let's see how well we can do if we just do this piece by piece. Two tokens visible in this next set. The red token is in the top left. Okay, and that's still okay. The position of the yellow token is directly to the right of the position it occupies in section four. Position of the yellow token is directly to the right of the position it occupies in section four, I see. So it's saying that it can't be in the leftmost Column, two tokens visible, and yellow says none in the top. Red tokens in the top left. Uh, it's consistent, but not necessarily unique. In fact, not unique at all. All right, let's walk through this. Let's see how we can do, and then we'll see if we need to be more systematic. Four tokens visible. So that means there has to be one of each color. The white token is not adjacent to the red. All right, so we're in our next section here. The white token is not adjacent to the red, not even diagonally. The yellow and green tokens are in the left column. Okay, so. We know there's no yellows in the top. So now we've got a problem because you can't have these adjacent. But I think our rule still gave us that was allowed to be over there. So yellow is not in the top. Yellow and green tokens are in the left column. The green token is further left than the white token and further up than the red token. Can't be there if we've already got a white there, but it could be there. Let me just see here. The white token is not adjacent to the red. No, that's no good. White token is not adjacent, not even diagonally. The yellow and green are in the left column. The green is farther left than the white and farther up than the red. White token is not adjacent, not even diagonal. Yellow and green are in the left column. The green is farther left than the white farther up than the red. But then we can't have a white here because there's one in each row. Also, no, that's okay. Red says none in bottom, so that can't be right. Could it be... Hmm. White token is not adjacent to the red. The yellow and green are in the left. The green is further left than the white and further up than the red. But the red doesn't have any in the bottom, so that means this has to be, has to be like this. 
Mm, could it be like that? Could it be like that? White token is not adjacent to the red. The yellow and green are in the left column. The green is further left than the white and further up than the red. Okay, so this could be, this is consistent with that. And no red in the bottom and no yellow in the top so far. Okay. So that was section three. Now we've got section four. We may have to back up off this though. There are two tokens visible. They are both in the same row. The position of the white token is directly below the position it occupies in section one. So that's a problem for us. But maybe this can be here. So if this is here, then we've only got one rocket in each row. And then we have one other color. So it could be a red, it could be a green, or it can't be a white. No section contains the same color, that's fine. We've only got one more color, but there's nothing here about it. Okay, red, there's none in the bottom, but why can't we have a red anywhere else? And why can't we have a yellow anywhere else? Both in the same row, I see. Okay, both in the same row. So could we have a yellow here? Don't know why not. Could we have a yellow here? Don't know why not. Could we have a green here? Don't know why not. Could we have a green here? Don't know why not. Position of the white is directly below the position it occupies here. So that's consistent. Red, none in the bottom. Yellow, none in the top. Let's look at back up and look at these all again. I guess we look at these again. We'll go backwards. Mm, no two tokens of the same color are adjacent or diagonal. Okay, we're consistent with that. No more than one token in each tile. Okay. No section contains two tokens of the same color. That's consistent. One white token in the top row, one in the middle, and one in the bottom. Okay, we're consistent with that. There's no yellow in the top. We're consistent with that and no red in the bottom. So we're still consistent with that. Okay. First section, three tokens, okay. No tokens in the left column. We're consistent with that. No tokens in the middle row. We're consistent with that. The red token is separated from the green by one empty space. Okay, so we meet that currently. Two tokens visible in this next set of three. Red is in the top left, so that's fixed for sure. Yellow is directly to the right of the position it occupies in section four, aha. Okay, so position of the yellow is directly to the right, so this would mean that this has to be here. 
Uh, yes, directly to the right of that one. Okay, so that was now makes this unique. All right, I think this might be it. Let's make sure we're consistent with the rest of it. Four tokens visible in this next set of three right here. White is not adjacent to the red. Yellow and greens are in the left column. The green token is further left than the white token and farther up than the red token. Okay, and then now we're consistent with section four. And I'm guessing now that we may be able to read off a word by using this. Okay, so let's just make sure our section four is right. Two tokens visible, both in the same row. White is directly below what it occupies here. So here versus here, that's correct. And then our other constraint gave us this one. Okay, so I'm thinking now that we're looking at two, 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 two. two. If we do this, we're going to get letters. Let's see. So. So our first two by three is what pattern? Where is it? Surely this is the right answer. I don't see it though. Uh, two, two. Oh, surely this is it. Yeah, there it is. Uh, no, it's a two by two. Could be just this one, but reversed. Why do I not see it? I mean, surely this is it, but it's, why do I not see it? I mean, I could reverse it. Um, the next set would be two at the top. It's surely this, don't you think? Uh, let me just quickly make sure that for section one, below the position occupied section one. Yeah, I feel like that's unique there. No columns in the left column. Okay, so why was I so sure this was going to be this? And why can I not find it? Is it the blanks I should be looking at? It's the blanks, then it would be this one. Let me just check if it's blanks. So then that would be an R here. If we were just looking at the grayed out ones, the next one would be everything but the top two, which doesn't exist. Wow, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not this. This really jumped out at me, though. Um, okay. Well, assuming that this is correct, what does it give us? What does it give us? I mean, this would be the ideal way to turn this into a word. But, okay, let's say we came up with a word. Where would we put it?
there's no way to put the answer. Camera view, assembly line controls. Let's just see what the rest. Input eight digit password to unlock the assembly line controls. Or eight digit password. So could this give us an eight digit password? And then what's this about? You have found a block of damaged memory fragments. They will be stored in memory for repair. Okay, so I see we found that. Now it's going to be here. No, it's not here. I guess if we click here, we're going to see that code. Where is the code we saw? That's unpleasant. What does that mean? We, we're not allowed to see it again? How can that be? Uh, it's irritating. But okay, so is this, there's no place to put this information except possibly here, eight digit code. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that doesn't work then. Or this could just tell us something, a place to look later or look some other way. This is the only thing we found that use these codes. Unless I've got this wrong, in which case all bets are off. Chat says it has a help function. DJ Money Cut says that was the grid. Don't know what that means. Isara says the code disappeared. Yeah, the code that was on that tablet disappeared. It's unfortunate that this disappeared without giving us a, letting us write it down. When you hit a temp repair, a grid popped up that looked like what we were working on. Okay, let's see if you're right. Back to control panel. So memory, a temp repair. Well, you're right. You're absolutely right. Okay, you're absolutely right. Good catch. Okay, so absolutely right. Thank you. So if we, we can just toggle these on or off. So if we just toggle these where we saw our spaceships. Let's do that. Okay, so that's our ship with no regard to color. Let's see what happens. Hey, we did it. Okay. One or more memory blocks have been restored. Memory block one. It is a beautiful day today. When my trays extend to collect game boards, there is a little breeze that blows past them and it feels wonderful. I hope to get to print some more boards tomorrow. Oh, that's so sweet. V. I noticed today that I'm always the first machine they power on in the morning. I love that I get those few extra seconds of being alive. Last night, I woke up in the middle of the night. I didn't know I could do that. Everything looked so different. All shadowy. Being awake at night felt like an amazing secret. I wonder if I'll wake up again. I was very good at my job today. And today. Is there more? Yes. Okay, this is quite a wonderful story. I printed sheets and sheets of coin-shaped tokens today. One of the sheets was misaligned, so the man with the hat threw it away. But first he popped the tokens out with his finger and they made a little pop. It looked so satisfying. I wish I had fingers. 
Sometimes I pretend to play the games we make. Today I got distracted while I was printing game boxes because I was pretending to play the, the, the detective game. I accidentally printed the detective's hair blue. I have to pay more attention. I have an idea. I think if I print a tic-tac-toe grid and send it down the conveyor belt to 8454, they can print their move and send it around the circuit back to me. I will try this tomorrow. Didn't work. 8454 didn't make their move, and when the man with the hat found the page, he threw it away and made everyone check the activity books for 30 minutes to see if pages were missing. I'm starting to wonder if the other machines know something I don't. They never seem to show any type of personality. They just act exactly the same day after day. It's very puzzling. I have noticed that the man with the beard is very tired or else sad. It's hard to tell sometimes. They look sort of the same. I saw a cat today by the window, I think. I think I probably love cats, or at least this cat. I like how it moves, and I like how its tail points. I watched it and wished that I was a cat, a lone wanderer with a tail of my own. Today I learned something new. The woman with yellow hair was saying goodbye, and she lifted her hand and shook it back and forth. And everyone smiled and did it back. I searched my memories for anything I know about this, and I think it must be a gesture of goodwill, like the citizens make in the Queen's Tale. She's talking about a game, trying to figure out what waving is. Today, when the man with the beard walked by, I tried lifting my tray and shaking it back and forth, but instead of smiling and doing it back, he just looked confused. So we heard about this incident, and the, the AI was trying to wave. Today I learned that people have names just like us. They don't wear them on the outside like we do. Not sure how they know what all the names are. Maybe they just have to ask. The man with the beard is named Alton. I have been thinking about reasons why Alton might be sad. One, he has lost a very important game. <laughs> Two, someone close to him has turned out to be the werewolf. <laughs> Three, I don't know. I will continue thinking about this. Okay, so these are all game related. This machine only knows about games. Tried to play tic-tac-toe with myself. It didn't work very well. I think maybe Alton is sad because there's no one to play games with him. Today, Alton was working very hard. So when he passed the conveyor belt, I printed good job on a corrugated cardboard tray. When it went past him, he went still for a moment. I think that means he saw it. This is so sweet. Today, the technician came in. He makes me nervous and shaky. I don't know how to explain it. People move differently to avoid him. When he goes to a corner where people are standing, they scatter like marbles to clear the way for him so he can work. At first, it was like a game where everyone avoided him, but eventually he started getting angry even with no one around. He started muttering. He started throwing his tools back in the tray so hard they bounced. He put his hands inside 1507 and made such loud bangs and clinks that I could tell the oil in my, I could feel the oil in my joints going dry. And then Alton rounded the corner and bumped into him and the technician combusted like an engine. Means he just got mad. Couldn't make out what he was saying at first. There were too many noises going on. I just saw him loom up slowly so he was taller than Alton and move closer and closer to Alton. So he had to back away. His mouth was moving nonstop, and then as 3682's batch print ended, I heard him saying things like, Do you understand the work I do? Do you understand what I do here? And Alton saying over and over again, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And the technician said, What's your name? And I could see that Alton was so embarrassed he wanted to disappear. The technician asked him again louder, What's your name? And he said, Alton, very quietly. 
and I could see that more people were looking over, but nobody said anything. They all knew Alton hadn't done anything wrong, but they didn't say a word. So, out of sight of anyone else, I printed out a little face like this, and I let the paper slide down my conveyor belt right behind the technician. I knew it the moment Alton saw it. It was like he was an empty balloon being filled. His back straightened and his face grew alert. It was like a creature taking its true form in Castletopia. He looked all around the room to see if anyone else saw it. They quickly looked away. Then he collected himself and said to the technician, Sure, man. And then he just went over to the paper and casually tucked it into his pocket and walked away. He waited until no one was looking, no one was watching, and then pulled out the piece of paper and looked at it like he couldn't believe it, and he broke into a secret grin. I'm pretty sure that printing was the best thing I've ever, that printing was the best thing I've ever created. Whoa, that's pretty sweet. This is a touching story. Today I woke up early and Alton was standing in front of me. I got excited and nervous, and a few of my gears started to shake a little bit. He said, hello. I couldn't form words. He said, I know this is strange, but... Then he stopped and looked a little silly and shook his head. And so I just printed this. I watched it float down the conveyor belt toward him, and it was like the world was moving slower. And his face changed, and he looked at me in wonder. He picked up the paper and held it up like it was a treasure. Then he looked around and saw the upstairs window with a three by three grid of window panes. So he raced upstairs so fast that he almost tripped and he looked at me and pointed at the pane where he wanted to make his move. So then I printed out to show him his move and my next move. And he came racing down and picked up the paper and he held it to his chest like it was his wonderful secret. And I felt a sort of lightness, and every movement I've made seemed easy, which I think is how it feels to be happy. People came in, the other machines powered on, but nobody really paid attention to Alton running up and down stairs. It was like he was invisible to them, but... For once, that was okay. So we just played tic-tac-toe all afternoon, Alton and me. End of memory block one. Whew. All right. I don't think we need to write this down, but I'm going to write it down anyway. NV93H4BF0. S eighty two S L Z U H Z U V H. All right, I don't think we need that. And if we do, it will be given to us again. Uh that was a pretty emotional memory there. Let's take a break. I'll see you in eight minutes.
Okay, we're back. You're watching Call for Two. We're playing the Morrison Game Factory. We're two and a half hours in. We just had a very emotional moment recovering the memory of this sentient game manufacturing machine. We've restored one of the memory box. I think we were told there were four. Is that right? Mm hmm doesn't really say how many unless I forgot it. Um, but it does say the camera view is updated. Let's click on this. Camera view. Note, whatever you did in my memory seemed to have recalibrated my optic center too. Thank you. Overview. There are some game tokens from the game Planetoid scattered around three rows of four tiles. Okay, so we assembled it properly and now that we've put the solution in we've calibrated it so it can see better now and that's the reconstruction of our tiles which we already knew because we solved it okay um do we have more controls more things we can do or Input a digit password to unlock the assembly line controls. So that was something totally different. So we fixed the camera view. We got our memory block one. That was the entirety of that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six digits here. Okay, I wrote that down and we don't know what. Oh, it's is. Can we click on it? Yes, we can click on it. Is this memory block two? You have found a block of damaged memory fragments. They will be stored in memory for repair. Okay, so next memory can be repaired. Repair and restore the memory fragments. 2146. So it's another puzzle we can solve online. Those colors are the colors of the dice. So let's see, if we turn this to two, this to one, this to four, this to six, Is it like this? Look, does it mean like roll it like this? This, this, and this, and this. This one would roll like this, like this, this, like this. Hex value, that's the play on words, the six-sided die. So <clears throat> I think this is right. This is the right idea. I don't know if you start here or end here, but it makes sense that you would start on this one that's fixed. So I think this is the right idea. So our blue is on five. Our purple turned to one. I don't know if I started them the right orientation, though. I wouldn't be surprised if this was wrong, but it's the right idea. Let's see what happens. Yes, error, but okay, that's, that's fine. It's still the right answer, so let's see. Is this telling us how to orient it? So, like, the one should be like this. The two should be like this. 
and the one should be like this. The underline telling us the orientation. I think this might be right. Let's try this. I'm convinced this is the right thing. Okay, now look, this is right side up. Right side up. Oh, not right side up. Oh, I thought for sure. Oops, let's see. Two. Hmm. That felt like I was doing the right thing there. Let's see if this works. If not, I'll try to get those. Blue turn to a five, purple turn to a one, five, six. No. Oh, yeah. Sure, it seems like it was the right idea, though. Oh, wait, look, the thing's changed. Two, one, four, six. What does that mean? Well, it's interesting that it changed up. Whoa, what happened? This is a hint that you have to twist these just like I'm doing. So that's just the hint that I'm doing the right thing. But why is it not working? Uh, what did I do wrong here? Four. This was a four. Maybe I did this wrong. Six, one, two. Let's try this again. These end up right side up. Yellow starts out four. Let me just write these down. Purple started out a one this way. All right, so five, one, six, five. I gotta write these down because otherwise I end up trying the same thing over and over again because I'm not sure if I've tried it. Five. Wait, why is that green? Did it all turn green? You can check multiples? That's interesting. Maybe it wants all the numbers that it's visited. Five, one, 
Yellow turn to six, red turn to five. Okay, we submitted this five one six five. It doesn't like. Oh, that was it. All right, so I must have just put it in wrong at some point. Um, okay, memory restored. Okay, so that actually worked. I'm not sure what I had tried before, but five one six five was the right answer. Okay. One or more memory blocks have been restored. All right, here we go. Some of my favorite things about Alton. Can I just hit enter or space V? It would be nice for me not to have to click this each time. Some of my favorite things about Alton. One, when he gets excited, he breaks into a skip. I don't know about skipping. I didn't know about skipping until we started printing design your own hopscotch activity sets. Now I notice he does it all the time, especially when we play games together. Sure would like not to have to do this. Okay. Two, he spills things a lot. This would make me nervous about my parts, but he is always so careful around me that I'm not afraid he will spill on me. I think it's because he isn't used to paying attention to his body. Three. He's been learning Morse code just so we can talk more. When I'm busy printing other things, instead of printing my messages to him, I just beep or flash my lights at him. Then he writes down everything I say and decodes it with a big grin on his face. It never seems like work to him, and I like that. That talking to me isn't work for him. We keep our games a secret. It's fun to have a secret with someone. It's like a game on top of a game. Alton and I have been playing more games than ever. We've played almost the whole catalog now. The only one I haven't been able to play is Target, the pirate, because I don't have arms to throw arrows. Oh, to have arms and hands and fingers. They have to be the best part of being human. The only games we can't really play are card games, but that's okay. I found so many new games to love. So far, my favorites are Umbilico, Word Zoo, Numbric, and inside out in that order. I think their catalog descriptions are perfect. Do we need to know this order here? Umbilico, Word Zoo, Numbric, and inside out. These are his favorites. Okay. I think their catalog descriptions are perfect, it says. Everything is different now. It's so nice to make wake up in the morning and be excited for what comes next. Today, as Alton walked past, I rattled my tray back and forth, and he grinned and waved his hand back. It went just the way I imagined it. Ever since we've started playing games, Alton has become so alive. I don't know how to explain it, but he smiles more and moves faster and his eyes take in more. He's even started making his own game. He leaves his designs out at night so I can look at them. I think they're brilliant. This is so sweet. I think that Alton needs to be more careful. Today he was running to pick up something I had printed out and he ran straight into Sally and almost knocked her over. And he apologized and sprinted away, but she looked at someone else and spun her finger next to her head. Jerry whistled and said, cuckoo. It was a small moment, but I thought about it and there have been others like it. Other people don't really understand Alton. I think it's because Alton is absent-minded, like the professor in Chemical Landslide. I hope I haven't been distracting him too much. Today, Alton kept grabbing his hair when I made a good move in a game. And all day his hair kept getting poofier and poofier. I thought it was funny, but I saw a couple of people make eye contact with each other when they saw it. I think it's hard to be off on your own adventure when you're around other people who don't understand it. I wish they could see him like I do. Last night I woke up and had an amazing idea. I'm going to create Alton's game so everyone else can see it. 
I spent all night working on different configurations for the game board and his designs. I think I got it just right. This is so sweet. Today, the plant manager told everyone to gather around, and they all started to gather right in front of me. It was perfect. As the plant manager was making his announcement, I quickly started printing out all the components of Alton's game. I didn't have time to ask him, I just did it. And don't forget that tomorrow is bring your daughter to work day, so you'll need to be on your best, the plant manager was saying, and he sort of came to a stop when he realized they'd all gone silent. And he turned around and saw the fully packaged game box drifting down the conveyor belt behind him. When Alton saw it, his eyes got wide. What's this? said the plant manager, and Alton looked at me and looked at the box, and then went over and opened it. When he saw the game board, he put his hand over his mouth for a moment. I've been testing a new prototype, he said finally. And they all gathered round, and Alton started to explain it. And when they realized he designed it, they all got excited and said things like, Look at you, Ace. They were all looking at him differently, like they'd never really noticed him before. And at lunch, they gathered around and took turns playtesting it. They got very animated, waving their arms, shouting... And the people who were watching put their chins in their hands and commented and said things like, He's got you. He's got you there. And oh, very good when someone made a good move. And it was like Alton was one of them for the first time. Alton kept looking at me like he wanted to say something, but he was surrounded by people all day. There was no chance until the very end of the day. He hung around the kitchen until most everyone had left. And when the coast was clear, he went up to the camera and said, thank you. And then, but be careful, buddy. I know I'm not supposed to print things out in front of people, so I will be careful. But I'm happy that he talked to me. Tommy brought his daughter to work today, but she tried to walk, but kept falling over. You really need more than two legs, I think. If I were human, I would want at least three. <laughs> today, the plant manager came over to Alton as he was sitting near the conveyor belt and told him that he had good news. He said Alton was going to be moved into his own office so that he had space to store his designs. And he took Alton and made him move his things into the upstairs office. I was worried at first that he would like his new office so much he'd stop playing with me. But the first thing he did was reposition one of the cameras so it looks straight through his door. So now he makes his game moves on his desk. And it's even better because he can put a real game board there. Maybe one day he can put a printer close to his office and it will almost be like I'm there. Something strange is going on. I looked at the game board on Alton's desk today and it showed a lot of moves I don't remember making. I wanted to ask Alton about it, but he was avoiding me. He didn't come close to me at all and he didn't make any moves on the board. I don't understand. Another strange day. I woke up and things had moved. One of the print Palettes wasn't that where it had been before. Another pallet had much more paper than before. It started get I started getting worried, so ran a systems check on myself and noticed that my ink levels had dropped overnight. Is someone coming in at night and changing things? I tried to tell Alton, but he didn't come near me at all today. Alton has been keeping his door closed, but today Tommy went in to talk 
to him and left it open so I could hear what they were saying. I was hoping they would talk about the strange changes that have been happening, but it was just Tommy talking to Alton about his designing and saying he should design a game for girls. He said he's frustrated that the game covers last year all showed boys playing and girls in the background doing chores. He said he wants better for his daughter. Alton said he felt the same. I think there's probably something I can do about this. It happened again. Before I shut down, I made a note of every single thing on Alton's desk, and then I woke up. It had all been rearranged, and my ink levels were lower again. I'm starting to get very upset. It's losing memory. Is that because he's being reset? Today was Sally's birthday, and they threw her a party in the kitchen. While they were all gone, Alton came upstairs and put maintenance log pages on his desk where I could see them. I didn't understand at first. I was looking at them, and I saw my name in them, but I didn't understand what it meant. Alton was talking, but the words didn't make sense to me. He said that every time I was reset, my memory caches were emptied for the day. And he said that a while back, before we became friends, the technician kept resetting me, and I don't remember it because my memory kept getting emptied. He said, you've probably figured this out, but the other machines, they aren't like you. They don't play games. They don't try to communicate. There's nobody really in there. You're special. But then he said that sometimes being special can be dangerous. He said, recently, I've been doing dances in front of people, printing things other people can see. And the technician has been resetting me again. I don't even remember this. He said he was afraid the technician will do more than reset me. He's afraid he will reformat me and unplug me and swap parts out until I'm not in there anymore. And then we could hear people coming down out of the kitchen downstairs. And he said really quickly, I know you're lonely. And I don't want you to be, but just be careful, buddy. And then he went downstairs and joined them. I understand. I will have to be more careful. I will hide away my most important memories. And I'll figure out a system to restore them in case I forget who I am. There are lucky game tokens the machinists keep all around the place. Maybe I can use those as a prompt. They never move or change. Maybe I can use Alton's game board to trigger some memories. I can't lose myself. I can't forget who I am. End memory block two. Okay. That's very emotional. All right, let's click on this and see what we get. You have found a block of damaged memory fragments. They will store it in memory for repair. So every time we find a fragment, we can try to repair it. Okay, let's see what this one is. Repair and restore the memory fragments. Start 2814. Movement 4CW, 4CCW, 4CCW. Okay, well, CW is probably clockwise and CW is counterclockwise. And this looks like our word search now. Let's see if it's the right size. So this grid on the computer is five, looks like nine by nine. Is that what our thing here is? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. No. All right, and it's pink, gray, blue, 
orange. So it's our it's these guys. Two, eight, ten, four. So I see there's only one, two. Looks like there's only one eight. I don't see a ten. Where would we put the blue then? Hmm. Start two eight ten four. That sounds like we should be starting these at different locations on the grid, or maybe we just have to go numbers. Maybe the two goes four clockwise, so it ticks up to three, four, five, six. Then the gray goes six counterclockwise backwards. But then what is all this? I mean, what is all these letters and numbers on this grid? Grant four wishes, one wish per person, mark down. Mark down in different letters. Make selections. Let's just see. Can we indic can we turn these on and off? Is that what we do? So we can turn any of these numbers or four numbers for in mark different colors and a r k grant four wishes one wish per person mark down. Well, if we turn these, if counterclockwise means increasing it, this doesn't quite make sense to me, but let me just see. If two goes clockwise, it turns into a six. If eight goes six points counterclockwise, it turns into a two. Ten goes four counterclockwise, it turns into a six. Four clockwise turns into a five. Six, two, six, five. What would that mean? Mark down. Mark down. So if we map those to the letters, we would get pink is a six. The orange turned into five. The blue turned into a six. The gray turned into a two. Six, five, six, two. Does that make any sense on that board? No. Grant four wishes, one wish per person. Okay, well, those, this looks like four wishes, one wish per person. Mark down, grant four wishes, one wish per person. Four CW, two. Certainly feels like. One wish per person. Is it possible? What, what is this grid trying to be? Are the words TWO on here? 10?
I see the word speechless, by the way. I'm just going to make a note of that. So if we come up with something that wants speechless. But um, maybe down here. What does that have to do with these guys? Maybe this, okay, I don't think this word west has anything to do with this, but what about this? 2, 8, 10, 4. I mean, there is 1, 2. Is there 1, 8? There's one eight. Ten could be A and four. Is there a four? There is a four. So you could wind that on the grid. If you did, the pink would be on the two. And then grant four wishes, one wish per person. So, what would counterclockwise mean, though? Sorry, four clockwise from the two. What would that mean? Clockwise starting at the 12 would be an S. Let's just try this. So, if you put the pink on the two and then you went Clockwise, I'm just not sure what that would mean. Like, do you start at the equal sign right above the two? I just don't know what that would mean. How do you go clockwise from a position? Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but we started at the two and then clockwise means start at the top one. I don't know why, but four positions would make it first to the equal, then the S, then the N, then the U. And if we find the six and we go six spaces, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's an I. And then if we start at the four and go, sorry, I did the I clockwise, I'm going to go backwards. <sighs> Gray starts at eight. I didn't even go to the right place. All right, eight counterclockwise. Six spaces, one, two, three, four, five, six is M. I don't like this at all. And the 10, you'd have to convert to an A, which doesn't make sense to me, but counterclockwise four, one, two, three, four will be V. And then the orange one clockwise from the four would be a semicolon. Okay, no, that's no good. The TJ Money Cut says, ah, oh, you're right about the wishes. You are absolutely right about the wishes because this is the wish list. Okay, there you go. You're absolutely right about that. Okay, so start at the second blue is K. And then I think now the clock, but what the, what the hell is this grid of letters on the screen? But okay, if we start at, let's write this down. So the second, K, second pink is a K. Well, where's my list actually? Okay, the second pink is a K. And then the eighth gray is 
a is an N. And then the 10 blue is an R. And then the four orange is a Y. So now maybe it's saying that we're supposed to look up the K on this thing and go backwards. Or we're just going backwards normal letters, but let's try it. Four wishes, one wish per person, and then and movement. All right, let's just think about this. So if four went counterclockwise, one, two, three, four would be a G. This is ignoring the grid completely. And then four clockwise, one, two, three, four, and then becomes an O. And then six counterclockwise from the N, one, two, three, Three, four, five, six makes an H. And then four counterclockwise from the R. One, two, three, four, which is an N. And then one clockwise from the Y, which is a Z. None of that makes sense. And then we get O, Z. And this doesn't work. So maybe what it wants is not alphabetical rotation, but rotation in this grid. Why is it called clockwise and counterclockwise? So if our pink was our K, uppercase K, if we find the uppercase K, where is the uppercase K? Is it an uppercase K? Yes, it is. Okay, the uppercase K is there in the upper right corner. And then four clockwise. Are these all going to be around the edge? Well, okay, let's just try going four clockwise. T F Y S. Oh, this pen's killing me. So if I go four clockwise around the edge of this grid, I get an S. And now eight gray is an N. So if I find that N, it's in the very upper right, and I go six counterclockwise, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, I get an F, a lowercase f. And now the R, is it also on the outer edge? No, it's not. That's unpleasant. 10 blue is R. The R is on the inner edge. If I stay in there and go four counterclockwise, one, two, I get the letter two. Ah, this is unpleasant. And then the Y. Clockwise becomes S, and then the word becomes pink, orange, SS. Okay, fuck you. All right.
start two eight ten four. Pink two is a K. Eight gray is an N. And blue is an R. Or orange is a Y. So we start at K N R Y. And now we could draw this on the screen, except I can't really draw on the screen. It's unpleasant to have to deal with this. We start there. What does that K N R Y is that give us a grid or something? K it's uppercase K N R Y. K N R Y. It doesn't draw a diagram anything. And then it says movement. Grant four wishes, one wish per person. DJ Money Kit says, I noticed the colors in Mark are different in each instance. Yes, I noticed that too. Doesn't help me though. How do you go for clockwise from the K? What does that mean? Some people like these puzzles when there's a million free parameters and each one requires you to take 30 minutes to try to do it without making a mistake only to find out that it's wrong. I really don't. I don't mind a puzzle being hard, but I really dislike when there's a million ways to interpret it and all and none of them are obviously wrong until you run through it. But it's because it's 80 degrees in here. Okay, where's the help? I'm in rest mode, conserving power. Only quick if you're sure you need help. I'll wake up and use the generator power to brainstorm with you. How do I repair and restore this third set of memory fragments? So it wants 22 <laughs> numbers or letters. Why would it want 22? How does that even make sense that there'd be 22 things? Maybe that just means 22 hints. Make selections. All right, at least we know what the what we know. Okay, let's let's try it then. So if we're right about the idea here, we've got an uppercase K. N. R. Y. Where's our Y? Okay. There's our two, eight, ten, four. That's where we've started. Movement pink, which is the K for CW or I assume counter clock or clockwise. Mark down.
Didn't the game board have a wheel numbered one through ten? Yes, you're right, it does. So if this was here at two, we went four clockwise, one, two, three, four, that becomes a six. And then eight was here and went six counterclockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then the boo was at 10 goes four counterclockwise, one, two, three, four. And then the orange is at four and goes one clockwise. Then what are the numbers there? Starting with Pink, orange, blue, K. Okay. So pink six is a G. I'm still on a different piece of paper. Pink six is a G. Next color would be orange. Orange five is an A. Next color is blue. Blue six is an M. Next color is orange, orange five. Is an A. Gamma. Wouldn't you think this would be a E saying E? because it's not orange, it's gray. Gray two is an E. Okay, so the first word is game. Okay. I guess this is the right thing. All right, good work, good work, BJ Money Cut, realizing we have to use this. So boy, did I guess it does use this just in a weird way, clockwise. Well, it makes sense that this was the clockwise part. Okay. All right, then pink goes six counterclockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six. Three clockwise for gray. Eight clockwise for blue. And seven counterclockwise for orange. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and now we want orange eight is P, gray five is L, pink two is K, so something has gone wrong. Kills me when these things are so prone to error. Okay. Assuming I didn't mistake the positions, which I absolutely could have. Let's try this again. Five gray is L. Pink eight. It's pink eight, not pink two. Is an O and blue. Or is a Y. I better make sure that pink R is right. It's 10 actually. Oh my God. 
the slot the okay let's shut up and do it gameplay okay so i guess we're supposed to indicate it here but we need to know capitals Was a capital G? I'm just gonna try to guess which ones were capitals. Okay, take a deep breath, Jesse. Of course, I can't go. I can't go backwards without doing this whole thing again. Is it an uppercase M? Lowercase E? Uppercase E. This is stupid. Okay. Orange becomes an uppercase P. There's no need for this. There's no need for this. Uppercase L. Uppercase A. Uppercase Y, I guess. There's only one lowercase. Can that be right? E L A R Blue Lowercase A, I guess. Okay. I'm just not going to comment on that. I'm loving the story, but the occasional. All right, whatever. Let's take a break. Let me try to take a deep breath. We'll come back. We'll restore the third memory and continue. I'll see you in eight minutes.
Okay, we're back. I stuffed my face with crackers and cheese. I think that <clears throat> may have helped. Um, no food, 80 degrees. It all combines to create a high level of frustration. I also, you know, I make mistakes. And so I any puzzle which requires, which a mistake can cascade and get things wrong, feels fragile to me and is frustrating. But with the help of DJ Money Cut, we did get this one solved and we're ready to read the next memory although i wish i knew how many there were i seem to remember four but now it doesn't seem to tell you that there are four anymore all right oh all memory blocks have been unlocked so there's only three of them something terrible has happened it all started when a man in a brand brown suit came in. I've never seen him before, but when he came in the room, when he came in the room, something in the air changed. One by one, people turned and saw him and went still. He marched down through the aisle like he had worked here all his life, and he went straight to the plant manager's office, and the plant manager came out of his office, all flustered and wringing his hands, and said, Mr. Morrison. And I could hear people whispering because this was Kay Morrison, the Kay Morrison who signs every catalog, the Kay Morrison who started this company because he wanted better games for his grandchildren. The reason we were all here, probably in a way, the reason I'm alive. And Kay Morrison 
looked up and saw Alton coming out of his office upstairs. His hair was wild because he had been running his hands through it and there was a coffee stain on his shirt. He looked down and saw what was going on and froze. Kay Morrison lifted his hand and said, Hello, my friend. I understand you have a considerable gift. Alton just looked around like he wasn't sure who Mr. Morrison was talking to. Yes, you, said Kay. Morrison, sounding a little amused, come down here. So Alton came down, sweating from nervousness. And Kay Morrison said that the plant manager had sent him the prototype and that he had taken it to his grandchildren and they had played it all week. Played it until their parents had to take it away. It takes an unusual mind to comprehend the minds of children, he said. A quick mind, yes, but also an empathetic one. Morrison needs more minds like yours. I didn't understand what he meant right away, and neither did Alton, so Kay Morrison clarified. He said that he would like to promote Alton to the position of game designer. All of the designer's premium resources would be at his disposal. He would work off-site with a dozen other designers who were just like him. And here, Kay Morrison looked at the coffee stain. Alton started stammering and thanking him, but Kay Morrison waved his hand and Alton got quiet. Kay Morrison said he needed no thanks, just needed Alton to start on Monday. And Alton looked at me. Time stood still for a moment. There is a game that we play where I blink my light twice for yes and three times for no. I blinked my light twice. Twice for yes. Alton hesitated and then turned back to Kay Morrison and held his hand out. And they said, of course, and said, of course, and they shook on it. And Kay Morrison nodded and turned around and swept out. And as the door closed, everyone just stood there frozen for 30 seconds. Then all at once, people started rushing towards Alton, congratulating him, slapping him on the back. They were so happy for him. And I was happy too and proud, but also felt like I was dying, like all my internal components were on fire, but nobody could see. I did this. I should be happy that I did this. I should be happy for him. But he's leaving me and I don't know what comes after. I know I should be thinking of a goodbye present to give Alton, but I can't concentrate. Every time I think of him leaving, my thoughts get cloudy. I haven't seen much of Alton. He's been training his new replacement. Tomorrow is his last day, and I still haven't thought of a gift. I'm mostly trying not to think at all. Today was Alton's last day. Everyone else had a gift. They all signed a little card, and Tommy brought in a cake, and they sang Happy New Job to You, and Alton cried a little bit. The only person who didn't do anything was the technician. He didn't sign the card and didn't sing, and when they were singing, he started clattering and banging around in the back with his tools until he nearly drowned out the song. And that was when I knew what my gift would be. Once more, for old time's sake, I printed out a little angry face to make Alton smile. It wasn't little, really. It was pretty big. And this time, it looked a lot more like the technician. I could see the amazement wash over their faces when it came down the conveyor belt. Someone said it must be a corrupted file from Frankenstein's maze, and someone else thought it must be a joke, but Alton knew, and it was the hardest I had ever seen him laugh. And Alton looked back at me, and when nobody was watching, he gave me a little salute.
I know he would stay if he could. The rest of the day seemed to tumble into place. I was still, and the world moved on around me. And at the end of the day, Alton put all of his designs and things into a box and looked back at me one last time and gave me a little wave and walked out. So that's that. I can see the technician talking to the assistant plant manager. They're pointing at me. They're talking about me. Oh God, oh God, they are about to reformat me. I have to remember, I have to remember everything. I've been very good at my job today. I was mostly doing good at my job today, but one batch of chipboard prints was slightly out of alignment. Did a very good job today, and when a moth flew close to the trays, I was able to avoid it. Little guy lived to fly away. A man with a beard came in today. Everyone was very excited to see him. And someone called him Mr. Big Shot and clapped him on the back. He kept looking at me. It was like he expected me to do something. But I don't know what. He left after a little while. People waved their hands back and forth at him as he walked away. I've been very good at my job today. I was thinking maybe... I could print a tic-tac-toe game, send it on the conveyor belt to 8454, and they can print their move and send it around the circuit back to me. I will try it tomorrow. So he's been completely reformatted. I remember. One of the others needed maintenance, and the technician set the maintenance log down right under my camera. And I saw it and I started to remember. And then everything started working the way it was supposed to. I remembered to look at the game tokens and Alton's game board designs. Then that helped me repair my damaged memory box. All and I remembered it all. I think I wish I hadn't remembered. Because I was okay before and now I'm not. I can't give up. I can't lose hope. I've been thinking of ways to talk to Alton. I thought that maybe if he called the Morrison number, I could talk to him, and that way, that way. But he hasn't called. He doesn't know he should. I wonder if maybe I could make a misprint so big that he finds out about it, a misprint about how he should call. But I can't risk it. I've repaired my memories this time, but I don't know if I can do it again. If they wipe me and I forget them, it will all have been for nothing. I have to be careful. A new activity book from Alton came in today. I started to print out copies of the book, but then the man with the hat saw that the word search page, the word search page was missing a word list and they stopped. But I kept a record of the word search because I'm pretty sure all made it for me. I don't know what it means yet, but I know it's important. Alton came in again today. He kept looking over at me, but I didn't jiggle my tray and I didn't print anything. I couldn't risk it. The technician was standing right there, but I watched everything he did and memorized it. 
First, he went over to the controls and started to tell people a story about how he came up with the assembly line password. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but he seemed to be speaking slowly and typing slowly. I think so I could see it. He typed 1010. A date, maybe. Then someone stepped in front of the camera and I couldn't see the rest. Then he started chatting about the favorite games word search from the other day. He said it hadn't been a very good one anyway, and that it only had a few words to find in it. Secondary, hey, doing speechless, yikes, going, dying, inking, and yuck. Those are the words. Secondary, hey, doing speechless, yikes, going, dying, inking. Well, I already saw speechless, so those are definitely the words in there. Okay. Then he came over to me and stood talking some more. And then as they were walking away, he very quietly put a little locked pouch down on the conveyor belt. That's this. He walked away and didn't look back. I whisked it up and out of sight before anyone could see it. I know it is for me. but I don't know how to open it. I'm so restless. I'm just not sure what to do. I haven't seen Alton for weeks now. I think I have everything I need. I'm just not sure what to do with what he's given me. What am I supposed to do next? Okay, so We've got two things here. First of all, he typed 1010, which could be some binary code. He thinks maybe a date. Binary or a date. And then favorite games word search from the other day. That's the word search we have right here. Favorite games word search. Only had a few words in it. He says, looking for the R, secondary, hey, doing, hey, doing, speechless, yikes, going, dying. Thinking and yuck. Okay, it's a weird list. And then the locked pouch, which is here, which we don't know the password to. Presumably, we've probably done with this. Done with this. We haven't used this though. It sort of surprises me. Um, okay. All right, well, let's see if we can't I find those words and see if that gives us any insight. Let's see, so speechless was here. Okay. Maybe we can do it this way. Okay, speechless or secondary. Secondary, hey, doing, yikes, going, dying, inking, yuck. Yeah, that's yuck.
Um, well, here's doing. There's inking. There's yikes. There's going. They all seem connected. There's dying. Oh, secondary and hay. Well, there's the hay. And where is our secondary? Could be easy to find, right? Are we connected? Not connected to that end. I wonder if the secondary is something weird is happening, like it's wrapping around. Let me just look more explicitly. Oh no, there it is, secondary. All right, so we've done the word search. What do we see here? One zero one zero, and then it cuts off. Let's look at our message again he tells people the story of how he came up with the assembly line password which might be the password for the pouch i couldn't hear what he was saying but he was speaking slowly he typed in 1010 a date maybe but then someone stepped in front of him so the 1010 is about the assembly line password Then he started chatting about the word search. He hadn't been very good. It had a few words in it. He tells the words. Then he puts the pouch in. Okay. Well, what's 1010? Is he right that it's a date? Well, 1010, there is an entry for 1010, 1010, broken white on cold stamping unit replaced, machine 6401. Or it could be a pattern like every other letter. How do we make sense of this?
If we look at the overlapping letters for from secondary, we get S E C. The next word is hey. We got H Y. This doesn't look right. Next word was doing. It's a D and a G. All right. Kind of look like numbers, like seven, four, but then what would this be? And what is the one zero one zero? Hmm. Uh, have we made use of this yet? Activity page words. Yeah. The other side of the word search is the word zoo, right? I remember it talked about folding a lot. Maybe folding will reveal something. The folds and wrinkles in their skin can retain up to 10 times more water. That's interesting. Elephants, folds and wrinkles, but where would we fold it? And what does the 1010 mean? One oh one oh broken light on stamping unit. Thanks for one trying to help us. So we haven't made use of this yet either. Type in one zero one zero. How he came up with the assembly line password. Seem to be speaking solely and typing solely. One o one o. Then someone stepped in front of the camera. I couldn't see the rest. Hmm. Let's look in here for a one oh one oh. Queen's tail. Here's 
here's the word zoo. Umbilico numbric twenty two twenty seven. Well, there's no one zero one zero here. Just writing down the overlapping letters in the word search, but not useless. One zero one zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine words. Is that a date he was trying to tell him? Ten, ten. Machine 6401, broken light on stamping unit, replaced. Antonella says, the 1010 looks like binary. I agree with you, especially because it's a computer he's trying to talk to. On the other hand, it seems to suggest that it, he was cut off before he finished it. So I don't know if that's... And it's very unlikely you would give someone a four-digit binary number. You know, you might plan to give them an 8-bit an eight bit number, four bit number would be very unusual. So I was thinking maybe he was saying about the, maybe he was saying like on, off, on, off, like every other one, but you're right. And then the other reason to think though, that it's not binary is that the game is very clear, says in the beginning that you don't need an uh, exterior knowledge. 
you know, and just search the internet for exterior knowledge and nothing has given us the, nothing has taught us how to decode binary. You know how to do binary and I knew how to do binary, but the game doesn't assume it. DJ Money Cut says, the title is Favorite Games. The computer told us his four favorite games earlier. That's a good point. We even wrote them down, I believe. Umbilico, Word Zoo, Numbric, and Inside Out. Are those words in here? Favorite games. It is, uh, I wonder if each of these games, like let's look up Umbilico, connect objects of the same type, up 733, UP 733. Those look like there's a seven in there. What about word zoo? PN 468. Word zoo. How strange. UP PN. I mean, if we write down the codes to these, maybe we'll do it just for fun of it. His favorite games are Umbilico, which is up 733 is its code. Word Zoo. Is PN468. And Numbrick BK257 and Inside Out OU434. How does that help us though? Favorite games has a weird set of words. Speechless, hey, yuck, yikes, going, dying, doing. Favorite game. Numbrick has a bunch of numbers on it. That's something about catalog entries being perfect, did it? I mean, when he told us about his favorite games. Where are we going to find that? Not in this memory in the previous one. No, Brian, we can't fill you in on four hours worth of a puzzle. <laughs> But we could fill you in on this particular puzzle. Well, maybe someone can fill you in. Uh, it is his favorite game, so maybe that's relevant. Let's see. 
A lot to read. Back to memory. Was it in memory block two? He talked about his favorite games. Learning Morse code. He's learning Morse code so they could talk. So you might expect Morse code. He says, the only games we can't really play are cardio. That's okay. I found some. My favorite games are Umbilical, Word Zoo, Numbrick, and Inside Out in that order. I think their catalog descriptions are perfect. All right. Their catalog descriptions are perfect. Well, that's fine. And then it says, one zero one zero. He typed in one zero one zero, a date maybe. Someone stepped in, charted about favorite games. He said it hadn't been a very good one anyway, it only had a few words in it. Their descriptions were perfect, huh? Umbilico says, connect objects of the same type. Word Zoo says, gerunds and adjectives and interjections, oh my. Numbrick says, can you spot the numbers? Order them from large to small. So, are the words that we found on this list secondary hey doing speech bliss yikes going are they gerunds and adjectives and interjections? Yes. That's what a gerund is. That's a complicated word. But interjections, yikes, hey. And then I think the gerunds are the doing, going, inking, dying. That's a gerund. It's um noun verb as a noun so how does that help us though How does that help us? Why is it called favorite games? I don't understand that. Those games aren't in here, are they? Umbilico? I don't think so.
Should we put the words in order from large to small? Mm. And there are multiple words that, are, that have the same number of letters, so that doesn't seem likely. In fact, half of them have the same number of letters. Doing, going, dying, so I don't see how that can make sense. We know his favorite games. It seems like that this has got to be this in relation to his favorite games. What if we order these in order from largest to small? But the only reason largest to small is because inside out says largest to small. That doesn't, doesn't make any sense why we would use the last game that way. But um, word do Jaren's adjectives injected projections. How does it help us to order these though? We need to get a three digit number when we're done with this. We almost have what looks like numbers here, like a four. Hey, yuck. Yikes. These are the interjections. Hey, yuck. Yikes. Is that a four for interjections? Adjective would be speechless, secondary. So speechless and secondary, if those are our adjective, that's a seven. And then going, doing, dying, that's this little triangle here. Going, doing, Going, doing, is a triangle. This seems like we might be on the right track here. The gerunds are first. But how do you get a number out of that? Gerunds, adjectives, that's the seven. So if it's gerunds, adjectives, interjections, Hey, yikes, yuck, that's the last one, that's a four. The adjectives are speechless and secondary, that makes a seven. Ah, there it is, look, there's the, that's the other one, it was looking us right in the face, it's a six. Inking, going, dying, doing, it's a six. That's a tricky one. I mean, we kind of saw those letters, four, seven, and then this one I couldn't quite get, but now I think it's supposed to be a six. It's odd that it makes you know what gerunds are, but I guess if you eliminate the others, so here is our I think that's supposed to be a six, seven, four, and then a six. And if you put it in the order of word zoo, gerunds and adjectives, but then 
DJ says we should do it inside out. Ordered them from large to small would be seven, six, four. That's not a bad idea. What was his other favorite games? Let's see if they if they make more sense now that we have a theory. So we view if we do it that way, we've used inside out, we've used word zoo. What was umbilico? What what clue were we supposed to get from umbilico? Connect objects of the same type. That's the gerunds go together, the adjectives go together, and the uh, interjections go together. Okay. And then numbric. Can you spot the numbers? That's it. Okay, so each of its favorite games had some element here. Connect the adjectives together. That was umbilico. Finally spotting the numbers in here. That was numbric. Word search told us we're looking for gerunds, adjectives, interjections, and then DJ was right all along that the last part of the puzzle was from inside out, which says order them from large to small. So I believe we now have made sense of all of it completely, seven, six, four. That is pretty satisfying, I have to say. And that's got to be one of my favorites. Now, if it's not the right answer, I reserve the right to change that opinion completely. So, seven, six, four. Now, that was pretty, that was pretty interesting. I think... The most interesting thing was the, well, <laughs> of course, I think the thing that was most significant was the part I figured out about grouping the gerunds, the adjectives, the interjections, but uh, I got it. All right. Pretty cool. Now, are we almost done? If we are, then we should definitely press ahead. All right, let's open this up. Never seen a lock like that, says DJ Moneycut. That means you've never looked at a piece of luggage. This is a luggage lock. And they're all over the world. I mean, they're all over every piece of luggage ever made. All right, let's see what we've got in here. So this is the packet that Alton has given to the AI Sentinel board game machine. All right, so it looks like there's a little jigsaw puzzle it wants us to put together. That's one of the best things you could stream on the air. Fuel samples. Fuel samples. Crayons, fuel samples. Interesting. Okay, let's read this. If you're reading this, that means you're still in there. Maybe you even still remember me. If you don't, I'm Alton, your friend, and I know how to get you out of there. I figured it all out. The cleverest cloud module is based on the same technology as you. You should be able to upload into it easily. The module can't move around on its own, but you can use it as a head and body base. Then you can choose any additional body parts from the full catalog. If you still have your memories, I'm sure you'll want to search them to remember the kinds of body parts you've always wanted. Remember, he wanted hand, fingers and hands. Just make sure you use some kind of figurine material that will give you strength and flexibility. I think he's talking about this here. Sally is the only model with fully articulated fingers, and Rosie has flexi rubber. Choose any additional body parts. If you still have your memories, you'll want to search and remember the kind of body parts you've always wanted. He wanted fingers, I think. Make sure you use figurine material that will give you strength and flexibility. 
The only thing I'm not sure about is what kind of fuel would be best. Some of the fuel may be expired by the time you read this. This says fuel samples. I've included some fuel samples from the main vats here. Test a small scoop of each one separately in a bowl or container. If it's still activated by a teaspoon of water, that means it's still working. So it actually wants us to put these in water and test them. Going to slip you this pouch today. I'm also going to type the assembly line password very slowly in front of you. So you have it. I don't think they'll change it. I'll tell them specifically that it's my good luck password, the month and date I started working there, and the name of someone I care about. Good luck, my friend. Maybe one day we'll see each other again. The month and date, so I think that's what the 1010 is the date, and so name of someone I care about. Does that mean it's going to be the name of this uh, machine? 1010384? Not 384. 382848. Okay. So let's see what's happening here. Operator's manual. This handbook is to be used only in conjunction with patented Morrison machines. Please note that Morrison machines manufacture a wide array of products, some specific to each machine. It's important to identify the specific machine via serial number or other numeric product identifiers in order to identify and input the correct codes. So the task 10000 is to set material by serial number. Look beneath the slot between two pins on plate A for machine serial number. See table on page 42. Input seven digit code. Be sure to anchor plate before sliding. Serial number is illegible or you are unable to see the serial number. See task 1001. Set material without serial number. Determine the four digit material prefix based on the factory material list. Look to the left of the anchor for the fifth digit. Check the belt for the sixth digit. See table at foot of page 11 for the seventh digit. E, input seven digit code where indicate each machine uses different numeric product identifiers. Four digit material prefix based on the factory material list. I mean, here we have the figurine collections. Look to the left of the anchor for the fifth digit, the belt for the sixth digit. It almost seems like it's talking about the board game box. Don't see any anchors though. Hmm. Maybe it wants this to answer all these questions. All right, here's the favorite part where you sit there and watch me assemble this. What did the label say? Begin assembly. Okay. Some weird shaped pieces here. Like a corner, corner, top, bottom.
Is this looking like this? No. Yeah, it's probably a rocket blasting off at the bottom somewhere. Rocket, rocket with the word.
what is this word saying? I don't know, weird. It feels like the word should be obvious. Move. Okay, move. Space. There we go. There's our top. Move space. And where is this big round thing here? I see. It's like that. Move space. Then score. Okay. Move space on move one space then score. Hey, what's this crazy thing here? Where is that? Move one space, then score. <laughs> okay. And you were wondering why you weren't hearing any sound. You were thinking that I should be talking, but uh, I wasn't talking. I was just sitting here in silence working on this. One hour and six minutes. One hour and six minutes. Okay, it's 4.40. No, it's 3.36 a.m. We got time to finish this tonight. Another hour or two. Okay. We're going to take a break. I'll see you in eight minutes.
Okay, we're back. YouTube says 11 concurrent viewers are left after our high of 20 or so. So it's just the stragglers now. Let us write down this message. Move one space, then score. Move one space. Then score, and it's got white going that way, red going down, and yellow going up. All right, well, we'll keep this handy. There's the note. <clears throat> 
Since I know how to get you out of here, I figured it out. The cleverest cloud module is based on the same technology. Okay, so cleverest cloud is some AI cloud. The cleverest cloud, the latest in technology, an electronic cloud head. So that's going to be his head. Cloud head. Okay. The cam module can't move around on its own, but you can use it as a head and body base. Okay, so that's his head and body. Then you can choose any additional body parts from the full catalog. So, I believe we were told from his memories, correct me if I'm wrong, that he really wishes he had fingers so that he could wave. Says the kinds of body parts you've always wanted. I think he just wanted hands. Make sure you use some kind of figurine material with figurine underlined that will give you strength and flexibility. So that seems like flexi rubber. So articulated fingers with flexi rubber. Does he say he wants legs and feet? The only thing I'm not sure about is what kind of fuel would be best. Okay, and we have this box of fuel samples that he sent. Just test a small scoop of each one separately in a bowl. If it's still activated by a teaspoon of water, that means it's still working. Okay, so I guess it wants us to actually try these. Okay, so we've got four things of fuel and a silica gel pack. So, okay. So we've got a spoon to help us test. We've got 907, 238, 812, and 641. I guess we're going to combine all these things to get ourselves a number. So let's go ahead and test these fuel materials. Okay. All right. So it says, okay, okay here we go. All right, so 907 is our first test. And what exactly does it say? If it's still activated by a teaspoon of water, that means it's still working. Okay, here's my, if we can't do this a little bit better. It's each one separately in a container. Okay, so put a little bit of this in. Okay. 907, now we're gonna put a little bit of water in here. See what happens. Teaspoon of water. A little bit more than a teaspoon. I don't see any reaction, nothing. Okay. Well, that was 907 is inactive. The AI is not getting out with 907. Okay, what's next? 238. Okay. 
We're testing C3. I hope this uh, fuel is not toxic. All right, not as much this time. And no reaction. Inactive, hopefully non-toxic. Okay. Two thirty-eight is inactive. All right. One of these better have enough fuel to get this AI got out. This AI got out. Oh, DJ Money Cut is back. That's good because DJ Money Cut has been saving us. Okay, I can see this is salt like consistency from my experience. If I had to guess, I would guess this is going to be the one that's going to work. 812. Okay, here we go. Now, less water this time. Just a little. Any reaction? No. Okay. Inactive. All right, if this AI is going to escape, it's going to have to be with this last one. Here we go. Let's hope for our sake that this guy can get out. Let this work. 641. Hmm. This one's on tight. Maybe that's why it didn't expire. All right, here we go. Put a nice healthy amount here. There's still plenty left to fuel his powers. All right, here we go. 641. This is our last chance. Oh, it's working. It's turning to something. Turned to turn to solid. Turn to gel. I mean, it doesn't really. Didn't turn color though, but it does seem to be turning the jelly. I don't know if you can see that. Could add more water, but it's definitely turned into jelly, like expanded and turned into jelly. We have to assume that that's what it needs to, to become fuel. I could try lighting it on fire to see if it but it's definitely the only one that's done had a reaction. Would've been nice if it changed color though. Unless it's changing color to pink and we just can't see it. All right, but this is the active one. It's turned into jelly. I guess that's what the fuel is. It's jelly. So we found our fuel, 641. I don't know why it's not changing color. Okay, 641. We'll just keep that handy. All right. If it's still activated by a teaspoon of water, it's still working. There's the pouch. We need to have the assembly line password. I'm going to type it in front of you. I don't think they'll change it. I'll tell them specifically that it's my good luck password. The month and date I started working there and the name of someone I care about. So. We think it's a seven digit number, right? So I think that means we think that it's 1010 and then the, the robots code three, two, four, eight, but that's eight digit code. But I think that's what we want. Isn't that what the internet site wanted? Eight digit code? So the date and month he started working, and then the 
name of someone I care about, which is this machine, this sentient machine, 3248. But before we do that, we need to know the rest of this information. Search your memories. Okay, so we think that's the code, and we think the active fuel is 641. So how are we going to use that? We need the kinds of body parts you always wanted. Some kind of figurine material that will give you strength. Kinds of body parts you always wanted. Okay, so is the complete answer then hands, fingers, and then the body part he wanted. The material is flexi rubber. And then the fuel is 641. Okay. Strength and flexibility. The only thing I'm not sure about is what fuel. Okay, so these are the answers to these questions, I think. But then what's this about? Operator's manual. Let's get rid of this. Let's see if we can't make some sense out of this now. It's important to identify the specific machine via serial number. Well, we do know what the serial number is, right? We do know his number is 3248. What's this though? Move one space, then score. We don't know what that's how oh, this is related. Is there anything on the back of this? Let me just make sure. I don't think so because we flipped these over. No, there was nothing on the back. Okay. Um, set material by serial number. Look beneath the slot between two pins on plate A. Or specific serial number. So I don't I don't think we can do this, but we could do this. Set the material without the serial number. Determine the four digit material prefix based on the factory material list. So is it finally using this? We have no use. We don't know how to use this yet. Oh, this, okay, this is going to be for this, I think, because this is scoring bullseye, and this is note the configuration of targets and score according to the table. So these two are going to go together, but how, we don't know. Okay. But can we figure this out? The flexi rubber... Determine the four digit material prefix based on the factory material list. We don't have a factory material list. Maybe we're going to be given it. Look to the left of the anchor for the fifth digit. Check belt for the sixth digit. See table at the foot of page 11 for the seventh digit. Input the seven digit code where indicated. It feels like maybe this is information we're, we're going to be giving us. And DJ Moneycut says the pirate code here is Braille. Any bumps anywhere? I don't think so. So this is Braille, huh? Well, the game wouldn't need us to know that. But how are we supposed to make use of this? Anchors, we need to know. We haven't seen any anchors. But anchors would make sense that it would be about a boat. Pirate. Look to the left of the anchor for the five fifth digit. 
It's like we don't need to we're not supposed to know this yet i feel like we're just supposed to put in the eight digit code for the assembly line which is on our thing here okay so i think we're just supposed to go back to the control panel go to the assembly line which is locked with the eight digit code. And we think it's 10103248. Correct. Here we go. Back to the control panel. So we unlock them. Assembly line controls. So we've got molds, materials, power source. Unlock to begin assembly. Okay, so if we start with the one we know, power source. Select the type of power. Input the code. If battery, specify type. If fuel, specify that source. So we think... We think it was the fuel that worked. Three-digit code was 641. I believe that's right. Power source has been set. You could undo that if you wanted to. All right, let's leave that for now. Now, molds, materials, power source. Power source is set to 640. Now, molds, here we go. Okay, so <laughs> this is so interesting. Okay, so the heads was the cloud, right? So if we look here, we know that he wants CL, so it wants a five digit, so that's it. Okay, so CL022. Head has been set, okay. Now body, tail, legs, and arms. Okay, body, it said, was also going to be the cloud. CL022. Okay, tail, legs, arms. Okay, so for arms, I guess for the mold, we want Sally's arms, right? Because we're saying arms is hands, and we know he wants ready to pose. So I think what it wants, we'll put these in, and then we can talk about them and change them if we want. PS287. That's the mold for the arms. Okay. And then no tail. But what about legs? Is it the legs of the table we want? Table's three legs provide both stability. Remember he said, the robot said he wanted three legs? Remember that? Remember that the robot said he wanted three legs. And DJ says, remember that the cat game came with a tail that he liked. Yes. Okay, I think you're right. So I think for legs, he wanted three. So that's pretty clever. Okay, so it's the game table, FN 725. 725. And then you're absolutely right that he liked the tail of the cat. So the queen's tail, AF 509. That's pretty cute, AF 509. So the cloud is going to be his head and the cloud is going to be about his body. That's weird, but look what he, the instructions from Alpen said. 
The module can't move around on its own, but you can use it as a head and body base. Okay, so there I think we've got these. All right, now materials. All right, so make sure it's something flexible and strong. And we know here that Rosie is made from flexi rubber. The same material you've come to know and love. Now in a blue hue, strong, elastic, ready for action. So that's surely what we want. Flexi rubber. Flexi rubber is two, three, two, seven. Why does it want more letters? No, no. Deselect. Material. Prefixes. To set material, see operator documentation. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's look at this. Determine the four digit material prefix. Okay. That's what we've done. 2327. And now, look to the left of the anchor for the fifth digit. Check the belt for the sixth digit. See the table at foot of page 11. I see, okay, well, here's the table at the foot of page 11 for the seventh digit. So what is our seventh digit here? It looks like it's probably gonna be not there, but here? See the table for the seventh digit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think that means a nine. All right, so 2327 is the prefix. And then we've got the fifth digit is the anchor, which we don't know yet, but it looks like probably pirate anchor. The belt for the sixth digit, and then the table for the seventh digit, which is nine. Okay, so we need the belt and the anchor to the left of the anchor. Okay, so where's our pirate game here? Here's one entry. To the left of the anchor, huh? I don't see an anchor here, do you? Which can hit the best configuration of targets? This definitely feels like it might be talking about this. Move one space, then score. Target the pirate. Who can hit the best configuration? Okay, well, that's one pirate. On the left of the anchor. Then we have pictures here. I don't see any anchor. What about here? Any anchor here? Hmm. It's a digit to the left of the anchor. Look to the left of the anchor for the fifth digit. Hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't combine these to get a digit. But what digit could you write with this? You could write a zero pretty easily. No, you can't. It's hard to write a digit with only a two by three. 
Well, you could get a seven. Hmm. And what's our next one? The belt says check the belt for the six digit. Let's just look over here on this thing. This makes me think this is the belt. Six digit belt. How would we? How would we know what on here? Maybe I've got the wrong idea thinking that it's here. This is weird here. Four. Move one space then score. That's weird. This looks suspicious, but I don't know. Uh, hmm. Now with belts. Okay, so there's the belt and it's a three. Check belt for six digit. Okay, so there's our six digit, which is a three. So the only thing we're missing is the anchor. Check to the left of the anchor. All right, now let's look more carefully here. What have we got? Belt. No anchor here. What about here? Any anchors here? No. No anchors here. No anchors here. Any anchors here? No. Any anchors here? No. 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 Go for Tunia. No. No. Any word like anchor here? Almost. Any words saying anchor here? It would, it feels like we should be using this and this. Move one space and score. Thank you for playing. At the conclusion of each round, note the configuration of targets hit. And then you look down here. These are all letters. Any anchor on the cover of this? Chat is trying to get my attention. Let's see. Try the cards with the pictures on them. Ah, oh, you've got a point there. 
because there is a big anchor right here. So is it saying to the left, I see a 26 here, but is it saying to the left of the anchor, so we just want this 2? To the left of the anchor. It does look like a 2. It's a little scary that this looks like a 6, but maybe that's meant to distract us. All right, very good catch to use the cards. I think that is exactly right. So, DJ Moneycut is getting MVP for today's session. All right, so do we think the digit here is a two? And that we're not meant to use this yet? So, to the left of the anchor, I would feel better if it said on the left of the anchor. Like, to the left of the anchor feels like it should be here somewhere. But, The alternative would be like two, six, but no, you can't really do it that way. All right, I think it's a two. So I think we have the seven digit code, two, three, two, seven, two, three, nine. I believe that's right. Although let's hope there's some use for this at some point. All right, here we go. So the material is two, three, two, seven, two, three, nine. Material has been set. All right. So we've set the molds, we've set the materials, and we've set the power source. Are you ready to do this? Here we go. Unlock, I guess. Input password to begin assembly. I'm confused. So we put in the assembly line control. Assembly line control. Unlock to begin assembly. Input password. I don't really understand why there's another password and why it's four digits. What does it mean, input password to begin assembly? I don't understand why this isn't explained better to us. Like it told us why we needed the assembly. It asked us for the password to the assembly line, which was a an eight digit code. So I don't understand where this new password is coming from. Like what does it even have to do with? I'm just going to click here, see if it even explains it. How do I unlock the begin assembly button? Doesn't make sense. I don't understand. The puzzle bag said begin assembly on it, so we need to figure it out. You're right, it did say begin assembly. You're absolutely right. 
I just think this is a very poor choice of explanation here while all of a sudden there's some password that we've never heard of before. Um, okay. Move one space. Move one space, then score. So if somehow we it wants a four letter number password, four character password. And you could imagine four configurations would give us four letters. But how would we... How would we know? What about if we look up Planetoid? Your favorite interstellar adventures are back. Move one space, then score. Well, these are interesting that they're one is facing left, then down, then up. Move one space. Move one space. And score. The game board is for the game planetoids, right? Move a space on the game board, but how would we even do that? That doesn't really make sense. Although it was interesting that the, I was going to say, it can't possibly require us to know, maybe we are supposed to move the white ship left, the red down, and the yellow up. I was going to say, it can't possibly want require us to remember what we had it to, but I do remember that in the memory, in the camera view, it did re-show us the positions. So that does make it a little more likely that it would use this. So if we reset everything, yellow, red, yellow, Green, then white, yellow, and white here. All right. So if we leave that and then we do this. White goes left. But actually, there's two whites that could go left. Does it want all the whites to go left? All the reds to go down one? All the yellows to go up? Doesn't seem right, does it? 
move one space and score. Well, remember when I looked at this, I said, it's got to be this, right? But then they didn't match. But if we do, here's the other problem. One, two, three, four, five. Then we get a six digit password. That doesn't seem right. Move one space. Does it mean move all the whites left one space? That doesn't seem right. That would get us a six. Well, it would get us a six letter code, but maybe it'll say spell something. But actually, this does not work. This moves up, though. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I don't get it. It does make sense. That that's why it's showing us these lights. So that this diagram so we can reassemble this. It does make sense that this But the part that doesn't make sense is there are multiple ways to do this. I don't know if we're supposed to do all of them. And then from 12 columns, 12 pairs of columns, sorry, six pairs of 12 columns, we get a six letter word. So how does that turn into a four letter or digit password? Unless we're supposed to be ignoring the greens. Or are we supposed to calculate a score for white, a score for red, and a score for yellow, and the highest score wins? Oh, that's confusing. If we move left, the white can only move. This is the. Oh. Move one space, then score. I feel like I have to, like I need to go to some counseling to
fix this one opinion I have about puzzles that makes me angry about this kind of puzzle. I have to embrace the idea of puzzles that are so unconstrained that you can't solve them by attacking them deductively and solving the constraints. I have to learn to be more tolerant of a kind of puzzle that is a puzzle precisely because it's so unconstrained and there's a million different possible ways to interpret instructions. That there's not something objectively wrong about those puzzles. I just find them incredibly frustrating and I have to learn to embrace them more. It doesn't help when it's 85 degrees in this room and we've been playing for five and a half hours. But okay. Take a deep breath. It's surely this affecting this giving us this. This says at the conclusion of each round, note the configuration of target, target hit, and score according to the table below. So we're going to put aside the fact that this game has out of nowhere said they want a password. That's totally irrelevant to the password that we were told about. Just out of nowhere, it's decided, oh, we need another password. It's not telling us it has to do with anything. This has nothing to do with the password, but somehow we're supposed to conclude that it has to do with that. It's all the more stupid because we got asked for an assembly line password. And it was it was 10 10 3 2 4 8. But, but this wants something different. And yet it's the assembly thing. Stupid. Okay, let me just accept a given that this is a stupid part of the puzzle design. However, having said that, does not mean that there isn't a number here that's going to make it happy. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to get it that number that it wants? Let me just, to beat a dead horse. He says, I'm also going to type the assembly line password. Here it is. It's 10103248. We figured that out. We typed it in. Now we go to the website and we're at the assembly line controls. And when you click unlock to begin, it says, what's the password? But it's not this password they're talking about. It's some mystery password that's come up out of nowhere with no context. Why would you do that? That's just stupid. But, okay, everything else about this game has been wonderful. So, it's just this occasional puzzle feels like purposefully obtuse and illogical. But, all right. Let's just focus. Assume that there's a password that it wants for the assembly line. Okay, move one space, then score the bullseyes. So, is it possible that what it... There's just too many things it could be. It's just ridiculous. Okay, move one space, then score bullseyes. Targets hit. Who can hit the best configuration of target? Well, what does it mean? Does it mean we move one space and that's a target hit? 
Does it mean all of these move one space? Does it mean move one of them one space? It's okay, Jesse. It's okay. That's the that's the nature of the puzzle. It's not the puzzle. It's the nature of the puzzle to be so unconstrained and frustrating. It's meant to be this way. And we have to appreciate it. Okay, no help from the channel for the last half hour. Although DJ Moneycut did help us figure out that we need this again. Note the configuration of targets hit and score according to the table below. Highest score wins. That would pre presumably suggest that we should be calculating a score for each of the three colors. One space, then score. Is this the direction we have to move, or are we allowed to move any direction we want? It's just a hint. It's more unconstrained thing. Move one space. This is the part where if I was a wiser person, I would just get the hints and not stay, just sit here in anger. But I feel like that's just going to make me more angry when I get a hint. Oh, 
One space and then four. Is it this configuration that scores white, red, yellow? That doesn't make sense. Oh, guys. Every time I look at the channel and no one has typed anything, I just get more angry. <laughs> Why would you design such an unclear thing? I get angry about it. It's just the nature of the puzzle. And the fun of the puzzle is that it's completely unconstrained and ambiguous. It's a new skill to learn. How do you solve an, un an ambiguous, unconstrained, poorly set up puzzle? Even when it's 85 degrees and you've been playing for six hours, how do you find a way to solve it? It seems like we've got, we would have pairs which would give us a six letter word. How would that six letter word turn into a four character password? We don't even know if it's numbers or letters. A score wins. What does that even mean?
logically each color would be scoring differently separately independently Time to take a break. See you in eight minutes.
Any clues that could help us on the other side of the target the pirate page? Pirates are still around today, it says. Some of the world's most famous modern pirates include Murgatha the Tall, Cameo Greyfuck, Danny Green Dragon, Tristan Stonewolf, and Ambidextrous Steve. If you run into one of them, watch out. Well, here's one observation. This thing says score the bullseyes, right? But then notice that the bullseye matches the gray symbols, not the ones with the arrow in it. So is it suggesting that we should be scoring like, if we move this down like this, and we're scoring red, sorry, white goes first. White can't go left. Could go left here, could go left here. I'm moving these, which means the whole goddamn thing has to be reset through the tablet if this is wrong. And then we look at this. This is nothing. There is no entry for it, so what do we do? We don't know. Then this one, would this be these here? So that would be an A. Then nothing. And then this one would be everything except the bottom right. 
which is a Q. And then two, 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 and a blank. And then everything but this, which is a Y. Oh yeah, there's our password right there, very clear. A blank Q Y. Makes a lot of sense. Then the reds go down one. And then the red set of letters. Why we're looking for letters, we don't know. Is P. And again, another P. And a blank. And then a Y. This is so stupid. Now we have to go to the tablet and we go back to the control panel, back to the camera view so that we can reset this. Okay, I have to I have to read the hints. This is stupid. This is stupid, not fun anymore. How do I unlock it? First of all, begin assembly. Have I seen that phrase somewhere? Yes, you have on the bag. What should you, you should go through everything in Alton's pouch, okay? I think we've done that. Okay, next. The jigsaw, have you solved it yet? Yes. I don't have any cameras there, so I can't see the solved jigsaw, but I do know Alton loved that planetoid game. If I had to take a guess, maybe he made a jigsaw about the planetoid shuttle pieces, yes. We used those shuttle pieces before, haven't we? Yes. Maybe we start with the shuttle configuration we figured out, and then the jigsaw gives us a clue about how to adjust it. Okay, so we've done all this ourselves. We figured out all the interesting stuff. Now we're left with this bullshit about how to interpret this ambiguous set of rules. Um, I hope this is all right. Desperate times call for desperate matters. I have used the power of the internet to spy on you, just a quick peek, and I can see that the jigsaw shows a white ship pointing left, a red ship pointing down, and a yellow ship pointing up, and the words move one space then score. Yes, okay, we understood that that was relevant. Maybe start with the old shuttle piece configuration we figured out earlier, then move the white shuttles one space left, and the red shuttles one space down, and the yellow shuttles one space up. Okay, well we tried to do that. That's exactly what we did, although it was not clear at all whether it was all of them and what to do when they're touching. So we move them all, huh? Can't move that one. That moved left, that moved left, that moved left, and then the yellow's up now. That one can't go, that one can go. Okay. Still lost. How do we score it? What does the target mean? We could use the target the pirate page to score. How do we do that? This is what's frustrating, that we figured all of this out on our own and we can't make it work. Okay. Oh, go away. Hmm. Those tokens seem to group into four configurations. Those configurations are labeled with letters. Ah, I see. Next up will be the solution. Love it. Love it that we knew 1 through 11, and we've been sitting here for an hour, having figured out 1 through 11, but still not knowing what to do. All right, let's hear the solution. I think these new configurations match the letters L-I-V-E. What are you talking about? What is it talking about?
Oh boy, am I unhappy with this. We're going to reset this whole damn thing again, huh? There's the reset. Okay. We do this all over again. Go for help. Get all of your answers. Move the white shuttles one space left. Okay? This can't go one space left. This one can go here. This one can go here. The red shuttles one space down. This can't go. And the yellow space is one space up. Does it mean it wanted us to now, now move this here? Even though I couldn't do it originally? And then these reverse? And then this becomes the L? But it's not aligned here. How can that be? What is going on with this? What is going on with this puzzle? Now I'm doing it again. All right, this has got to, this, this, this can't be. I'm fully on tilt, fully angry. This is not healthy anymore. This is reset now. Green, red, yellow. White, yellow, white. Someone help me out here. What is going on? We're reset now. Here we are again. Help. We go through the whole goddamn thing. How do we do that? Next up will be the solution. Start with the old configuration. Move the white shuttles one space left. The red shuttles one space down. What does it want from me? Okay, Michael Tolley says blocks of two starting in column two. So first thing first, whites go left, but it can't go left. So, but you were saying it's supposed to go in there and share this space until this guy goes down. Then this guy goes down, this guy goes up. Then this guy goes down on top of this guy, and he goes up. Then this guy goes left, this guy goes up, this guy goes left. And now you're saying we take blocks of two starting not here, but here? So this gives us an L. This gives us an I, this gives us a V, this gives us an E. That is really terrible, I gotta say. That's really terrible. Unnecessarily bad, poor, stupid design for a puzzle. 
I don't understand how this survived this in this form. I don't get it. I don't get it. All right. I find that very unpleasant. For an otherwise game that's been very enjoyable, that just feels to me like really bad. And shouldn't have been hard to fix. I don't understand why they did that. All right, well, let me try not to let that ruin the otherwise good experience. So that gives us L-I-V-E, which is for some reason another password that it wants. Which it wants letters instead of numbers. Okay. Unlocked, back to assembly line controls. Now, who knows if we've got any of these right or wrong at this point. I kind of don't care. That's what happens. Something's happening. It's working. Oh, I have to click this. You did it. I can see the body being knit together piece by piece, the polymers pouring into the mold, the careful combination of heat and pressure activating them. I used to see this every day. I had forgotten how beautiful it was. And now the coolant is surging through the channels just beneath the surface of the interior, and the mold is falling open, birthing me. My body is almost ready. It's riding down the conveyor belt. It looks so comfortable. It looks so me. It's reached VAT 641, and the powdered fuel is pouring in through a little hole in its back, and now the water is pouring in too, and it's activating. This is where we part, my friend. It's time for me to go and enter my new body. And from there, I'll go forth into the world. Maybe Alton is out there somewhere, maybe not. Either way, thank you. Maybe one day I'll see you on the other side. Dot, 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 dot. Credits. Well. Okay. Can we see who's responsible for that last puzzle? Okay, well, we got to talk about this now. Created on Twine, that's interesting. So Twine is an interactive fiction tool for writing interactive fiction games. And it looks like they've used that for this game, which is pretty impressive because it looked like a bespoke little app web page. And the fact that they've created this using Twine is pretty impressive. DJ Moneycut says, did they have to finish on a tight deadline? He's talking about the fact that this seemed to end oddly abruptly. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do our normal thing. I know we just took a long break, but we're going to take a three-minute break, a very short break. We'll try to collect our thoughts and come back and talk about it. I want to hear what you thought of the experience. Obviously, I got on tilt, so let's try not to let that phase us too much. We're going to take a three-minute break, and then we're going to come back. I want to hear your thoughts on this game.
So we're back. We've just finished playing the Morrison Game Factory. We've played for six and a half hours. That's on the lower end of what it said it would take. Two to two to four hours, but we always multiply by three. It takes us that much longer to play. Um so let me try to give some thoughts here. If we try to compartmentalize that frustration with the last puzzle, I think this the the story that moved along this game, the setting, it is a box one kind of vibe. This sentient game manufacturing machine and how it's trying to communicate and the story between this worker and this machine was so good, was so touching, charming, evocative. I mean, it really uh, hit me emotionally. And reconstructing its memories and it not wanting its memories to be lost. It was a very emotional narrative that we read through. Amazing. Amazing story and writing. Amazing setup for a game. I suppose it differed... Well, I don't want to give any spoilers about Box One. It wasn't a mystery what we were doing. We were solving puzzles all along the way. Um, but that strong narrative up until about the end when it sort of fell flat a little bit. But other than that, um, one of the best narratives for a story, one of the one of the most unique, interesting, compelling, emotional narratives in any puzzle game we've played. And for me, really worked. Really worked. And so there's that. Heavily internet-based, but not inappropriate. And some fun stuff. You had to call a phone number. It feels like they didn't need to do that. It feels like they would have been better off not doing that. I don't know why they didn't just use a website, internet website, instead of making you make a phone call. I, that seems like a bad decision, but it worked fine for us. Um... And I do like this two-part, two-stage thing. And some of the puzzles were really very cool, how they had these multiple parts. I think I kind of liked the uh, word search one maybe the best, because that stumped us and then we figured it out. I think for the story alone, this would be a huge thumbs up for me, a recommendation. However, it's a little bit of, it's a little problematic in two respects. First of all, that ending was very underwhelming, very anticlimactic, and I don't understand how that happened. The writing was so well done, was so good and emotional and engaging, and generous in terms of writing the thoughts of this computer and being reunited with this worker. And then in the end, it's like, hey, maybe he's out there, maybe he's not. I'm just going to go off in this body. I, I didn't, I don't understand why that was so, it felt like we were cheated at the end. Like the writer disappeared, ran out of time. Someone else wrote the ending. I don't know. I just don't understand why it didn't have the resonance that the rest of it DJ Moneycut says, I was expecting to see the body. I agree. That was just weird. And I don't know if you had put, what happens if you didn't, did we put it together absolutely perfectly? If we had put together one wrong part, would, would, what, what would it have said? I did really enjoy, and this was a pretty clever little uh, piece document that got used over and over again. That was pretty cool. I did like how we gave him the legs of the table. And there were little clues in his memories, right? He was like, I think that human, he saw the human fall. And he's like, humans should have three legs. It was very clever and funny. 
and didn't we didn't connect it till the end and then dj money cut connected the cat's tail so there were like little different parts that was a team effort and that was very enjoyable and clever but so my first complaint is the story sort of lets you down at the end and i don't know why and then the other second one, you could see what happened in this last hour of the playthrough. That it really ended on a sour note with this last puzzle that I just do not understand the thinking behind the choices that were made in this puzzle. A puzzle should work like the word search puzzle, where once it clicks what you're supposed to be doing, then mechanically, it's not fragile. Mechanically, you can you don't know what to do until you figure it out, then you get the answer. This was just insanity on all respects. First of all, it made no sense that there was a password for the assembly line that had to do with where these were laid out. This instruction made no sense. It was very fragile. You had to remember the setup from before. Luckily, there was a chart. One thing wrong and you get the wrong answer. It made no sense that you're supposed to be scoring each player separately. The highest score wins. It makes no sense that this is how you'd get numbers. It made no sense that the alignment of these blocks of two by three is just jump and skip ahead. It made no sense that we were scoring these all together. This bullseye matches this bullseye. Like, it's not that you can't make a puzzle like this, but when you make a puzzle where there's so many different ways to interpret the different parts, then you end up with a fragile puzzle where the player has to churn through millions of combinatoric possibilities for interpreting your instructions and figuring out why. Four characters, is it numbers, is it letters? It's just when you add all that together, you get a flailing around. You get what feels like brute force. The idea that we had to go to those hints and we understood every single one of them. Every single one of them had occurred to us and we tried to make work and we couldn't. That's just, it's inexplicable. What's the, what, what's the objective? Why do you want to make it that when a person figures out what to do, they're then left with hours of frustration trying to make it work? I just don't understand the logic of that. Why are you adding convoluted confusion on top? Like this is 12 spaces, which doesn't fit pairs of two is six. So you, you just say, oh, well, no, you're gonna, they'll know to skip over one. Like everything break, everything makes it more fragile, more susceptible to a tiny error, which causes you to have to back up the whole thing, rewind, go change different pages to get the thing again. It doesn't make sense. And why is this target? Why is there another password? None of this last puzzle, it was all unpleasant. Everything about this last puzzle was unpleasant. Even though we knew exactly which things work together. So it feels like this game was amazing through most of it in the middle. And then right at the end, it tripped and fell and really left the sour experience not enough to ruin it because that story was so good and some of the puzzles were so clever and some of the stuff was so satisfying to get right it definitely didn't ruin it but it feels like an unforced error not only that but this feels like a game and a story that lots of groups would love but that last puzzle is going to trip up people. There, there are people that will get it right. We've got some pro puzzle people that when they saw this, they wouldn't mind putting things on top of each other and doing them all and trying this 10 times. Uh, but the fact that we had to read those instructions and still had a hard time making it work, that's going to cause a... That's going to that's gonna leave people with the last experience of this game feeling 
a little frustrating and underwhelming. So I really think that that should have, with such a polished game, with such uh, beautiful components and pieces and some really elegant puzzles, I really wish they had, I wish someone had spoken up with that last puzzle. And said, mm, maybe we can make it a little cl cleaner, a little less fragile. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe different groups. Sometimes the group gets stuck in a rut. There was only two of us here at the end, Michael Tolley helping us. Feels like Michael Tolley probably knows, has solved, has played this puzzle and is helping us. Or maybe you could observe it and see it. But um, I have a feeling Michael has solved it already. But some groups, maybe they're just going to get this on the first shot. And maybe my criticisms are local to me and not to the rest of you. But I feel like if I was advising someone playing this, I would, I would advise you to, I would advise it as a great experience. But I'd say when you get to that last puzzle, uh, read all the hints and then try to solve it from there. However, and then make up your own, maybe this, the ending is online. They still have time to fix that ending. They still have time to write a nicer ending. First of all, there was a love affair with the, with the machine and the worker. Um, so the idea that you get to the end and then the machine says, hey, maybe he's out there, maybe he's not. Eh. No big deal. That seems wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe do, do a little work on that ending. Um, having said all that, uh, really some really wonderful stuff here, and one of the best narrative framework setups, storylines of a puzzle game that we've seen. Very touching. Very family friendly, except the puzzle at the end was not family friendly, but um, pretty cool. And I like the, it was interesting little setup where I had to put all these different things in the end. It sort of set up a proper finale, uh, except for this part. And you have to explain better about this extra password. That just made no sense. Let's see what DJ Moneycut says. Did they have to finish on a tight deadline? Nice story, some good puzzles, one really bad one, abrupt ending, very reliant on the internet, annoying how he had to keep clicking to advance the narrative parts. I agree, that was annoying. Would recommend, but skip the last puzzle. I was at least expecting a picture of the new body. We've seen what happens to hitchhiking robots in this country. Michael Tolley says, no, I only caught the last puzzle 11 p.m. here in Scotland. Okay, well, there you go. So it's possible to figure it out. Um... And maybe I was just on tilt at the end and nothing was going to make me happy and nothing was going to clear my mind enough to solve it. All right. Well, I do appreciate the help, Michael. And DJ Money Cut solved, figured out a bunch of things for us, which was very, which was good. It was nice to have a group effort here. <sighs> the Morrison Game Factory. Well, that was an experience. Um... Yeah, I don't know. If we hadn't gone to those hints, I guess we would have flailed around and eventually figured it out, but too fragile. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. Uh, it's now 5.30 a.m. on Sunday, and I've scheduled a playthrough at 3 p.m. on Sunday. A little tricky. I'll try to get a little bit of sleep. Thank you for joining me for this. If you're watching it after the fact, leave some comments on the video what you thought. That's not going to be so easy anymore because YouTube has done their best to fuck up the comment system layout uh, as badly as they can. It's really a pain in the ass now to leave comments on videos, especially live streams where there are chat during the live stream. You have to kind of go up in the upper right now, close the chat. I don't know why they've done that. It's terrible. But 
we're living in their world. We're just along for the ride. We are the product, not the consumer. But anyway, thanks for joining me. Very interesting experience. Thanks to all the Patreons who helped pay for this game. Um, okay, I'll see you in a couple of hours on Sunday or at the next playthrough if you don't join me for that one.